Sweet. I'm hit. There we go. Do, 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 I think we're... Do, 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 Wow, wow. There's a um, When I was watching season four with Fringy, he was fucking loving that intro. And I was like, yeah, I remember when I loved it. But then it became a sign of like, oh, this show again. When in season two and three. And then it, and then it came back to me. I was like, ah, oh, I do love this intro. It is great. I Yeah, I absolutely. I have the soundtrack. I love it. Uh, yeah. They did the best packaging for season one. They made it look like a VHS tape. Uh, that was some of the, you know, uh, Hitchhiker did that too. Hitchhiker's, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when they mm -hmm. released the TV series that did that. I think that was just super cool. Hi, everybody. Hello. We decided to go live. Uh, my name is Gary Beekler. I come to you from Nerdrotic, and this is my good friend Mahler. Hello. And Hello. I'm also live with my good friend Gary from Nerdrotic. There you go. Hi, I'm Mahler. <laughs> We're like multi streaming right now. And yeah. Because cool. both of our fan bases are like, hey, what did you guys think of that? nerdy show that came out about just now um do i watch this on release by the way i haven't done that for anything in ages i think i told you i was like actually excited to see how this ended not gonna lie about 60 percent of that hype belonged to eddie pretty much entirely when i yeah. saw that clip yeah. in the uh in the trailer and i was like you, you fucking kidding me he's gonna play a mel song you kidding me right now i'm gonna die <laughs> right um, uh, we were just talking about this now. Uh, I'll sorry to repeat myself, Mahler, but mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen every TV show in the world and I haven't seen every movie. Uh, but I can't think of too many that treated our fellow metalheads with this much respect. It usually is the metalheads are kind of weird. That's how they get it's like the yeah, reclusive yeah. and they're often like into really niche shit and they're annoying, obnoxious, that sort of thing. And you see them for a couple minutes, if that. And they usually yeah. live in a place that's just like falling apart, um, which that they came close to with Eddie. Yeah. I was like, oh, is he going to be in a dirty trailer? This is like all or messy. Uncle, and... like, or a father would beat the shit out of him. Yeah, that's and... what I thought they were yeah. going to do. But they didn't. They didn't, no. Uh, his uncle was great. Um, yeah, I thought so too. That's the one of the things they did really well, really well, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. I was, uh, I was okay when it when I was coming back. It was like, you know, I'm gonna watch it eventually, just yeah. because I'm a completionist. And I didn't like season two or three very much. My wife liked them a lot more, but seeing that I live with her, I'm going to watch the show she wants to watch. And uh, I was, I. I I can't think of too many shows that had two bad seasons and then just got better. I don't know, Buffy. <laughs> kind of. I like, all, I like all of Buffy. I like all of it. Dude, all I love Buffy all of it, been, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, you know, you know, as 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 good as you may think, season one or two are like they're nothing of it as five and six sort of thing. No, no, no. It's the same with Next Generation, right? Like yeah. I like season one, but I, I'm not going to defend it as being good. I just like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, dude, I feel that way about a lot of this season. Uh, this is one of the closest examples I think I've got of I quite like all of this, even though I recognize there's a lot of problems, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm trying to ignore them <laughs> as best I can. Well, how many times have we discussed it on multiple live streams that when you have good characters, you can get away with some plot holes. You certainly can. Mm -hmm. You can get away with a lot of stuff if because a character is king. At least with with us, anyway. I mean, maybe not for everybody, but character is king, and it makes up for a lot. And some of the kids like did a really good job. Some of them were kind of, eh, but the others have improved quite a bit. Yeah. So, uh, I yeah, I, I, and I am probably I, I don't know. I saw some people not like. I love the Russia Hopper storyline. I dug it. I completely dug it. So I thought it was really strange, but I mean, it's the most I've enjoyed yeah. Hopper since season one. So yeah. Because how much I hated the effing Russian storyline in season three. Oh, it's was like, awful, dude. And yeah. for some reason, they, they wanted to take Hopper. Like, because this is the thing. I've actually rewatched seasons one, two, and almost all of three. I've got, like, an episode left. So I'm my, my Stranger Things memory is back up to, like, full potential now. Um, man, do I fucking hate season two and three. They are so bad. Uh, and it's so it's funny to rewatch them and get all of my, like, vague thoughts reaffirmed into, like, actual arguments. Because... All the plot lines are fucked. Hopper completely, they got, they fucking ruined Hopper. They made him a joke, a terrible dad, like someone who just yeah. doesn't pick up on social cues at all. Someone who's like, like slapstick funny idiot. And I was just like, man, did they watch season one? He's like this hardened, sort of cold at times, 
um, seasoned veteran cop who's got really good critical thinking skills and manages to uncover the plot like almost on his own. Yeah. In the and first then, couple episodes, walks to the back of the, you know, to the shed where, where Will yeah. went missing and immediately, you know, got, well, got sucked into the upside down for a second, you know? And he, um, uh, the putting together that he'd lost his daughter and he's trying to get Joyce's son back. He refuses to allow that. And, and do you remember when they, they're like, they found a body and he's like, please don't let it be him. Cause it's yeah. like, he's just desperate to get the kid back because of everything that's happened with him. It's like, yeah, it was really endearing stuff. But man, like, I've had enough of him by the time he gets to season three. I want him to go away. He's just, like, angry, and it's like everyone's making jokes about how fat he is. And it's just like, why, why is... why He reminds me of um, him in Black Widow. Um, yeah. The same fucking character. But season four, they're bringing him back. He's a lot more calm and collected, and he's very focused on the people he loves. And he's trying to enact some plans, you know? It's just like, ugh, this is much better. Yeah. they They reset a lot of characters. Uh, I thought Joyce was better. You know, I, I it, it's the second best season. I, I mm -hmm. will get into it certainly. And and this again, this is a stream of consciousness. That's how I that's how I live stream. <laughs> I'll try to keep it in order as much as I can for for Mahler, who's got a better memory because he's younger and just because he's smarter. And uh, I'm going to be all over the place, but I'll try to keep it as linear as possible. I don't know how else to talk about this other than making it all wibbly wobbly. It's all good to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, it it was pretty clear. I thought it the the first episode was a little slow, but then it got going. And in context, after seeing the whole season, I think it's 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 all pretty good. This is the second best season. It could have been the best. It oh, could easily have been the best. Yeah, that much. A couple of things they could have done better. I thought, mm -hmm. uh, which we'll definitely hit. But um, I don't know. Do you think uh, you were just talking about Eddie eclipsing? uh episode four. Oh, I, I think he has yeah. from what i'm seeing yeah. online like the amount dude the amount of tweets i have seen share that three minute scene and they get like over a hundred thousand likes and every and they're all different like dude everyone loves that scene people who haven't even heard master of puppets before love that scene to me it's one of the biggest like because a friend of mine who was heavy into metal i showed him this season and told him what was coming and i was like and eddie was automatically his favorite character and i was just like Dude, like, it's obvious. Metal has mainstream appeal beyond what a lot of people even realize. Uh, it always has. And you have said multiple times that, like, they really kind of dropped the ball by not putting more metal. Uh, they, they really want to go into the pop stuff in the 80s. And yeah, while that was certainly there as, as somebody who lived through the 80s, I hate mm. it. As <laughs> but, you um, survived. You fucking did it. Uh, I survived them and no, we weren't listening. I mean, that stuff was on the radio a lot. That playing Susie at the end was good. That was good. No, mm -hmm. no problem with that. But um there there was a, a lot more metal. That metal was everywhere. Cause that's the eighties is where the punk were punk <clears throat> and metal kind of merged later in the decade. Around it was yeah. eighty it was eighty five, eighty six, eighty seven when that was happened. So we stopped the 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 punks and the metal had stopped fighting each other and started just partying. Uh, and Metallica was one of those bands, you know, Megadeth, Slayer. There was others that kind of brought, you know, brought thrash, you know, together. And um, it was very appropriate for them to play Master of Puppets, I think, in 86. That's when the album came out. Dude, uh, someone, there was someone who was like, it's a plot hole. He couldn't learn that in two weeks. And it's like, uh, Eddie Munson could. <laughs> he's he's obsessed, okay? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Of course they could because they did they, they because that's all they were doing uh they were at home jam i like he he is a uh like an amalgamation of all my metalhead friends uh eh, le less drug abuse uh but uh yeah they were playing D, &D. they were listening to dio and and uh metallica all the time that's who i hung out with so i thought they did a pretty good job i thought they did a pretty good job with him uh and i think he's pr easily one of the best characters in the entire series. I think I'd be lying if I said he wasn't my favorite, but yeah. part of it is the fact that I just, I love metal as a genre so much. Uh, heavy metal being the main one I started on, and then just the fact that they go with a Metallica song. And if you remove all of that, it's got a huge amount of meaning. Um, check out the fucking lyrics for that song, and then think about what happens in the season. It's almost like they built the season for the song, but you, you could say the same for Running Up That Hill, so it's just like, yeah, this is just really good writing, really good incorporation. 
um, you know, twisting your mind and smashing your dreams like that. Yep. It's just Vecna. <laughs> well, I mean, it is. I mean, they cut out the chop your breakfast on the mirror. That's the kind of, that's what spoke to us as kids <laughs> back in the 80s. But, you know, uh, that's, it was freaking cool. I like how they, they put it. It was straight up a mu music video scene. I'm fine with that. I yeah. And they, that. they did chop up the song. And I saw some people complaining about that. And I was like, well, if you think about they how this to. works in terms of um, the actual narrative, all Eddie's doing is trying to make as much noise as he can with his guitar, with what he knows song wise. So he's jumping between portions of Master of Puppets that have, you know, a higher frequency of just guitar stuff, basically. Um, and that, you know, that helps out in terms of cutting it up to make a more high-paced three-minute action scene sort of thing instead of the... Because they cut out the slower parts of Master of Puppets. Yeah. It's a long song. Yeah, and, and dude, I, I would have loved it if they played the whole thing, but I'm not sure that you can get away with playing the whole thing in that scene. I don't think it would work because the bats have to get to them at some point. Is it would be awkward if yep. they just don't. And then when they're playing the slower parts of the song, you just be like, why are they playing the slower parts of the song? It's probably not helpful to anyone really. So yeah, I think they did a really good job of uh, mixing it all together. And I I fucking love that they threw Dustin in there to basically just be a metal fan watching Eddie do his thing. Um. Dustin is the best of the kids, I think, at this point. The... Oh, easily, easily. Lucas did uh, the kid who played Lucas did a good job. He did. Uh, it was nice to finally see they give him an acting job to do, and he can nail it. Um, going back through the series, I don't think Lucas has been great in season one, two, or three. He's kind of just there. Uh, yeah. This He's time, there to hate eleven in season one. Yeah, uh, be kind of a foil. I can't even remember. Like, and I just watched him. It's just the season two and three are uh, my wife will defend them, but I'm like, eh, you know, it, they just <laughs> it's reactionary. It's it's the problem with the Duffer brothers. It's what keeps them from like achieving, uh, you know, ultimate writer status, you know, like uh, I know everybody hates them now, but Joss Whedon uh, would go there with characters, you know. Yeah, I, uh, Duffer brothers like, have a lot Duff of very consistent flaws with how they write shit. Um, I've explained this on a couple of uh, different streams. I was, I was on Nina's uh, last night, and I was going over this because it's, it's crystallized at this point. So I rewatched season two. If you remember, if everyone rolls their heads back uh, to good old season one, there's that call it a payoff, I suppose. That Nancy wants to go to the cool kids' house, but her friend Bob doesn't, and then she tricks Bob into saying like, "We're gonna go to a certain place," and Bob's like, oh, "I don't want to go here," and she's like, "It's a party, come Bob." She's like, oh, "I don't want to." And she drags her in, then she says, be my designated driver. And then she keeps trying to, but Nancy's just drinking away, and then she's like, you should drink too. And then she goes off with Steve to do what teenagers do. And uh, mm -hmm. Bob is like, I'm going to wait for you, so that once you're done with whatever you do, she's basically the nicest friend you could possibly ask for. Almost yep. too much, too nice. And she gets dragged off into the Upside Down by a Demogorgon and Eaton. Um, and Nancy's like sad about that. But most of the season's about Will. And you know that they wrote it to be about Will. The town doesn't yep. really give a fuck about Bob. Her parents don't even show up. Hopper's barely aware about Bob. It's kind of awkward. A lot of fans, when they watch season one, were like, Hey, um, you know how the the town went nuts over one kid disappearing? You do realize another one disappeared, right? <laughs> like it's, yep. And then season two, it opens with them, the Duffer brothers basically being like, Sorry about that. Look, everyone cares. Look, the whole town cares. The parents are now here. The parents hate Hopper. And they, like, retcon it, so they're like, Hopper didn't do anything for Bob. It's like, well, they didn't write him to do anything about Bob. <laughs> That's the yeah, problem. Yeah. Um, and the thing, it almost made me laugh when I was rewatching it. In the finale of season two, and all the payoffs are coming in, we're sealing up all of the loose ends. They have this, like, news report where they're like, Barbara was, uh, you know, she died because of these escaped chemicals, and they hold a funeral for her, and the whole town appreciates her, and, and Nancy's like, oh, I can finally, like, rest easy knowing that Bob has had justice. And I'm just like, <laughs> come on, guys. <laughs> like, no, you, you had to do it in season one. You forgot to. That's all that happened. Like, Yep. And they kind of, like, in season four, they, like, she's still bummed about barb you could tell they, she doesn't say it but you can tell she's still got a vendetta so that would that was more realistic you know yeah i would have um, leaned into it i would i would have just leaned into the mistake like barb is this this is person that nobody fucking nobody noticed. cared about her yeah and, she was a nice and person i don't care about and you could pay it off like at the end of the series but yeah there was so you know because i remember comic-con that year and everybody like there was barb fucking cosplay everywhere and justice for barb and <laughs> 
it was pretty funny justice actually for Barb. i remember there, that just, yeah justice for barb it was, well, it was the thing, unfortunately because the deaf brothers do this she's a very nice character and she does everything for a friend you know so it's just like so it's just awkward when you have her die and no respect is given now can you think of how that may apply to uh anything else also your camera's frozen i don't know if uh did it? it gosh dang it it did hang on let me turn it off there we go it's because it's running through something else mm -hmm. hopefully it can turn back on but uh and i'll just wait i gotta give it time um because we are totally jumping around topics but i'm assuming you may have yeah. read my my eddie munson twitter thread um well maybe not i don't know <laughs> but basically I did. Uh, I did. I read the entire thing. Yeah, I got. I uh, when I was watching it with some friends, we were like totally into it. Everything that was happening, and uh, the actor nailed his last scene as Eddie. It was like, oh, this is perfect. Even the dialogue was just like, ah, oh, it's great. Then we have the bit with Max, which we're going to talk about. And then it says two days later, and I almost like was like, wait, what the fuck? Two days later? Yeah, no, 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 that was not cool. And some people. Like, when I was um, sort of saying that on Twitter, they were just like, what do you mean? Like, what's, what's the problem? And I was like, two days later means we don't get to see any of the characters find out that Eddie died. That's, that would have happened in those two days. Nobody gets to be told how he died. And of course, they have the uncle. But, like, Steve? You know, Nancy? Robin? Fucking Mike doesn't get told? Mike was in the D&D the &D club. Erica? All these people who were like looked after by and respected and loved Eddie is like we don't get to see any of them actually uh hmm. Re react to it at all. Like the whole thing surrounded him. It's, like uh, especially that group. So a little bit annoying. And then you find out like you know, I guess they didn't hold a funeral and it's like they didn't even take his body back. It's still in the upside down. It's still in the upside down, which means they're gonna bring him back. You know they are, he's popular. That's the problem with the Duffer Brothers. I don't trust them. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like they will they will probably bring him back and no. be like, he'll come back in a nightmare thing, or he'll be a demon, or they'll just straight up bring him back. I wouldn't be surprised at all after what they what, what's happening in terms of well, everyone's love the for him. The body is still in the Upside Down, says Nina. Yeah, so um, did they ever resolve the fact that it's stuck in, uh, the Upside Down stuck in 1983? Um, That's still wide open thing right well uh what, what do you mean if, did they resolve it well did they explain it other than the upside down is in 1983 because nancy went down to get her gun and her gun wasn't there yeah right um and she's like oh shit this is before i got my gun so it's stuck it's it's a it time does not progress there obviously right it's just a yeah it, it seems to be jammed into the time of when it was created right like the day so, it was created I, you know, I miss things, dude. That's oh, all good. That's why I asked you. So, like, I was wondering if, if there's something I missed where they address that afterwards. I don't remember it. I don't, I don't think we get any more information. It's just the, I think yeah. they just want to build on that and maybe have some payoff with it later. That, uh, but yeah, it seems to be that it's, it's a clone, like a demonic upside down clone of our world, but it's stuck on that day. Nothing progresses there. So, I'm wondering if they could use that. I mean, it would be cheap. And I, like, I, at this point, I would prefer he stayed dead. I mean, I think he, sucked, if you're going to kill him like that, he has to stay dead because otherwise this, yeah. this fucking death scene becomes meaningless. Don't yeah. fuck it up. They always do this. Now it's a pretty good death scene. This is going to be my year. That's, that's some messed up shit, but it was good. Yeah, was good. the only criticism I had of that arc is like, man, they, they didn't quite trust us to remember the lines he had in the other episodes. They started showing flashbacks to the other things he'd said about how he always runs, about... Uh, different and I was just like ah oh, just just don't don't it's okay I got it I I picked it all up I was yeah. really happy with it you don't need to remind like when he's like oh we're not heroes it's like yeah I know I know like I know that was a great line I, I get it uh, yeah that that's that's you know that's where you miss the greatness it's just, yeah just that, just small gripes right? you know it's just like I it's, that's yeah it's small but they want they want to make sure people catch what uh how why this is meaningful. It's like yeah, I know, it's okay, it's all right, I'll allow it. <laughs> um, well, I mean, <laughs> considering what we see in certain audiences now, you can't blame them. But um, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's where you know the, the the Duffer Brothers don't have like a ton of experience. Like this is like pretty much their first 
success. Mm -hmm. They've done other shows before, a couple of other, but like this is their first success. Obviously, they worked much harder, had more time because of COVID and everything on this series. Uh, but I still think they made last minute changes to because they were still working on episodes eight, and nine, like right up until the end. Did you see that one tweet that went up that said, um, you might want to wait a few hours to watch it because we we still have some finishing. They still had some effects they had to finish. Yeah, it's so uh... want to fall asleep tonight and, and watch the, uh, the so like they are editing stuff to the last minute and then sometimes releasing it and then updating it. I mean, I didn't notice anything, but uh, that's what they—that's what I heard. That's it was all fine to me, but we're in that era now where they have patch updates for TV and movies. It's weird, but uh, that's where we're at. Because they did it with Spider-Man, yeah. right? They were updating uh, a lot of special effects in theaters. So weird. Yep. Yep. Um, oh, are you gonna go see the? You're gonna go see the re-release when it comes out? Um, I might do. I don't know. I guess it's it's gonna. It, it depends how much new stuff is in it. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. If it's like Endgame, no um but yeah uh, but i thought this show looked good i thought it looked really good even the de-aging on 11 like you can tell it was there but it was still pretty good i think i thought it looked really great the um yeah. here in the young young version um i was trying to think of how to because uh we've basically we've talked a lot about eddie so we may as well just anything else to mention about him this other than well i guess because i was gonna say like the why does he appeal to so many people so much and it's like um, it's pretty hard to get a character that appeals to a very specific niche, but at the same time has like more broad appeal than any other characters in Stranger Things as a whole. It's just like, how did you do that? And um, got to be tied to the fact that he's super flawed is, is one of the big things. Like he considers himself a coward, and uh, but at the same time wants to help as best he can. I think that's something that annoyed me was that um, there wasn't more appreciation for the fact that this is a guy who has absolutely zero investment in what the hell is even happening, but he didn't like shy away from it at all. Um, he just dragged into it because he was unlucky enough to be near someone who got Vecnered at the wrong time. Um, and then the whole town hunting him and stuff. I was like, I feel like he deserved uh, something more in the aftermath. That's kind of where I was uh, heading with that. Uh, yeah. Frustration, because some people on on Twitter were like, "Doesn't it make the arc more meaningful that he fought for the town, even though they hate him?" And I'm just sitting here like, I just don't know why you wouldn't want to write it so that um, more people understood that he was. The, 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 more people understood what he did, because it's it's really odd that the Hellfire Club is now officially like in canon. The ones that summoned the demons or the earthquake or whatever, like that's the current running theory. But at the same time, the Hellfire Club are all freely walking around. Yeah, that's that's going to be because if they're trying to base this on the West Memphis three, right, who are three kids um, who are in the metal, who got mm -hmm. freaking jail. If, for, for, for those of you who don't know, there's three little kids murdered uh, back in the 90s. And these other th uh, they were like little Boy Scouts and they were murdered by they say they were murdered by. A bunch of metalheads and they weren't it was it was a total railroad they're all free now by the way and it's still a very effed up story if you want to look into it but uh the, yeah the other problem is they're they're running around free <laughs> so that's that's a bit of a flaw unless they're just gonna have it be eddie i mean they're obviously gonna like like uh anybody who watched harry potter it'll be like serious black Right. He was always considered to be a murderer until like way after he was dead. And then they realized he was innocent after all, kind of like as an afterthought. Well, yeah, because, uh, you know, Eddie being evil is just a result of hearsay. So, like, why not throw yep. some hearsay back? Be like, it wasn't him at all. He's also been killed by this, you know, horrible set of events and that you're all incorrect. Instead of just going with, no, nah, we'll tell his uncle. That's it. Like, oh. Mm. Because I don't see the harm in announcing to the world, like, yeah, Eddie Munson didn't do anything wrong. You guys have been chasing the wrong guy. He's just an average dude. Uh, well, now that, like, giant cracks have opened up in the earth. <laughs> with like, they, so this, Yeah, this, that, this that is... looked like they're going into another dimension. It's not like lava's mag, red hot magma is coming up or anything like that. <laughs> so they're going to go, like, that's really weird looking. What Dude, is that? Why are these tentacles coming out? <laughs> that's what crack. I would file under the section of... I don't know about that writing wise in this show uh there's a huge set of things for that like a lot of people in chat have already been like uh you're gonna address how flawed this is it's like look 
There's a lot of weird shit in this season that doesn't really get properly answered and I don't think is very well done. I, the fact that America as a whole is like, oh, there's been an earthquake. It's like, fucking, are you serious? Have you seen this thing? Like, who in the world would actually be satisfied with that as an explanation after you see what it is? Well, the only way it would work is by not letting your townspeople stay there. Like, the military comes in, clears everybody, like, everybody's got to go. Yeah. Like, nobody can stay there. It gets, it gets, you know, there's, there's a perimeter, put a perimeter around the hell mouth. It's a hell mouth. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Um, and then like, how are you going to explain the time jump that they've said is going to happen? So they're going to, they have that big crack opened up in the earth and then the, it just sits there for five years and does nothing. Now I could see that as Vecna is gathering his strength his forces and his strength, but um the our military would be going in there that i mean they would mm -hmm. uh, now maybe they they show that and they're just getting slaughtered but what they i think what they failed to show was like what okay we see we understand there's a crack we understand there's a threat what threat like we, do we just nuke the town we could probably just nuke the town <laughs> there's a crack you know? nuke it <laughs> you know, give, give it a return of the living dead ending you know just clear everybody out and say fuck it uh but uh they they should have shown some kind of threat, not like, you know, some cloud Cthulhu. I want to see a little more from the Mind Flayer, for sure. Well, yeah, apparently and, they're, um, um, they're starting up writing Season 5 in August. I saw a tweet about that the other day, so, or today, actually, but... Oh, they haven't even written it yet? Oh, they've shoot. got their outlines, but yeah, they haven't, they haven't written it yet. All oh, the specifics. Man, it's, it's not going to be out for two years, easily. Well, it's also evidence that Eddie probably will come back, because they're going to be reacting to... Uh, how everyone's mm -hmm. reacted, and Eddie is hyper popular to the point where the fucking shareholders are probably like, "Can you bring this guy back, whoever he is?" Come, nobody learns. How can nobody has a Bible for their series? I don't know. You, you can have a Bible, and like, if it gets canceled early, you can adjust things. But at least you have that ending, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't get that. I don't, outline, schmoutline. That's fucking dumb. Like, have have your Bible written. Have your characters fleshed out rules for the world all that good stuff you know straczynski did a pretty decent job with that with babylon 5. absolutely yeah he even tried to account for you know <laughs> how how people could leave or die and stuff that's some forward thinking planning right um i'm gonna i'm gonna turn off my camera Hang on. turn back on Ooh, little sounds mm. like all right I'm on a different computer, right? Because, uh -huh. uh, oh, well, I was uploading my video. It took me two hours to upload my video yesterday. That was pretty annoying. Like, YouTube was acting weird and uh, wouldn't. Uh, they had the checks running forever. And I re like, uploaded, oh, dude, like, yeah. three of them. And it, was, it just stuck on 99%. I was so freaking pissed. But uh, it eventually went up. I had to rearrange everything in here. Um, I know, YouTuber problems. Oh, I, I hate those problems too, man. It's annoying as fuck. Um, but yeah, Eddie was great, and I want him to leave him alone now, because his, his arc is completed, and I'm loving that everyone's loving him, and I want more, but I'm not allowed more. And I think that, uh, as we were kind of alluding to, yeah, he should have been in the show since the beginning, and um, imagine how much stronger this payoff would have been if he was in the show since season one. Um... Imagine as well, I was thinking how cool it would have been if he had his guitar in, like, season one. It's, like, his most prized possession sort of thing. And then season two, through whatever circumstances, it breaks. And then he finds out in season three or so that the way the Upside Down works is it cloned everything from a certain date. And it all exists there still. So he knows now that there's a version of his guitar in the Upside Down that he can get that's, like, a demonic version. And um, I even thought it was the I don't know if you sort of felt this way as well, but, like, I love how the tentacles seem to move in such a way that respects the guitar. Like, they don't uh -huh. affect... I was just like, <laughs> that's, that's cool. just fun. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's a, and, yeah, I mean, like, you know, you could even make it have, like, an alternate sound because it's an upside-down guitar or something, but... Uh, oh, there's so many... And you could have had so many musical payoffs with him throughout the show. You know, save all the metal stuff for when he's involved in different scenes. And um, it would have been really neat. I don't know why they didn't take the opportunity to have him... They figure out that, like, str uh, Separate Ways is a song that can save Nancy and that he played it, you know, for her to get her out of Vecna's curse. Like, that would have been a really cool payoff, but they didn't do it. 
No, oh, yeah. Um, that would have been cool. You get that fucking wonderful moment, though, where he holds up, like, that Iron Maiden cassette. He's like, this is music. Yes, I was like, thank you. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I love, well, I mean, it's great. I, I, metal gets way more respect now, but it didn't back then. I was totally, like, sidelined and being like, eh, it's a bit obscure and weird. It's like, it ain't, though. It's really cool. <laughs> well, everybody thought you were a devil worshiper, too. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean... I'm talking about when I was a, a kid, when you were a kid, yeah, it was way worse for that shit, because, like, when when I was growing up, it was just, like, it was almost connected to nerd stuff, which is really interesting, right? Because it's probably the most edgy of all musical genres, except maybe when you get into, like, the really obscure stuff. Yeah, but I, pretty much every metalhead read a comic book. Yeah, which is where I was from, anyway. really, really cool. <laughs> like, it's, uh... Yeah. It's, like, uh... Because metalheads would just be a sort of cultural thing that um is like faded in and out in and out but like it seems to have almost gone now but it's just nice to see it there and then and like all these people enjoy it it's like yeah it should probably should probably be more popular it should probably be more around but the thing is you gotta you gotta go find this kind of music you can't it doesn't just pop up on the radio really no yeah that's that's what's happened well that's what's we're experiencing that with entertainment now it's getting fragmented like music is so they'll still be There'll still be genres. They're always going to be around, but you got to look for them. It's going to be, uh, yeah, like mom and pop shops. It's uh, it's no. crazy because um, you'll have your own sort of versions of this, especially when you were growing up and stuff. But like for me, with Guitar Hero, as I was, I talked to you about in DMs. Uh, fucking love Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero Three is um, loads of really great heavy metal and rock songs on there. But then you move to World Tour, Guitar Hero Five, and the further they go along, the more pop songs they started putting into the game because they were losing relevancy people weren't buying them anymore and then guitar Hero just ended as an ip like i don't th i'm not even sure they're making it anymore but um it sucks because like metal wasn't enough to carry it uh not enough people buying it you, you need your pop songs which is a shame <laughs> like but right. there you go i remember when the beatles one came out that was pretty cool yeah, well, um, I think I told you, but like after I saw this, I was like, all right, I'm I'm getting my guitar hero Metallica out. What's happening? Oh hell yeah, I still have. I, yeah, I haven't cracked. That's the one console game I'm, I was really good at. Well, it guitar. makes sense. Hell yeah, I remember getting better and better until I beat uh, the devil on expert on Warriors of Rock, and I was like, you know what? I peaked. <laughs> Life doesn't get better than this. I'm done. Yeah, uh, um, you know, d d excuse us, chat. We're just just extendedly talking about Eddie and how much he's, uh, he's someone I've wanted yeah. to see for so long, and, it, and we're not going to see him again for a long time in media. So, well, I mean, I eleven got sidelined, and I think it was good. I think it was very good to sideline a character who doesn't talk very much, um, who got seriously op in in season three. Uh, Papa, I always knew Papa would come back. Hmm. But well, yeah, they didn't. Crazy about his end, though. My, my wife said it was good, but I, I wasn't crazy about it. I felt like it, it was missing something. I was fine with him, like you know, dying and uh, mm -hmm. being well, a dick almost right up to the end. But um, the, I feel like they they he he's Papa's always like conveniently holding back information. And yeah. I still think they know a lot more. That's why he's like, I need you to understand. Well, fucking tell us. What what do we need to understand? Like, tell me. Like, how big is this threat? Like, it looks yeah, I know pretty nasty, but we still don't know. He always seems to be holding way more cards. than Because yeah. he must know more than what we think he knows, which is just upside down bad. we got to stop it. I'm assuming it's more than that. Because he's also, he just seems to know she's not powerful enough to take on Vecna. And it's like, oh. Huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, is she not? Okay. Which, by the way, was a good choice. Um, but the problem is, like, mechanically, I don't know about you, but, like, I have no idea. Whenever Vecna and her put, her, put their hands up, I'm like, I don't know who's winning. It could be either of you. Yeah. And, like, I don't they... think that's great. Um, it's like when Harry Potter and Voldemort fire little lasers at each other. Or, or you know, Palpatine and Ray firing electric at each other. It's like, I don't know who's going to win. I, I don't know. You haven't told me anything about how I could understand it, so. No. And, and that, that, that needed to be done. I think Vecna was, like, really necessary. Like, that's what the real linchpin of the season was, is we finally have a face to the bad guy who is going to talk. Yeah, and, and that was, I think, was missing seriously. Okay, 
I could accept maybe season two, but season three, no excuse. You got to tell us who the fucking bad guy is. Oh, I'm the asshole who like questions. can't even accept yeah. season two. I see. This is the thing. I just think that that we should have had references to Vecna from the start. They should have known this was where they were going to go instead of it being a, a correction because they thought the mind flare would be enough. But like, if you rewatch season two and three, they don't know what they're doing with the mind flare. They're like, yeah. He's a big old monster. He wants to take over the world, I think. Okay. Well, we I mean, like, go there, though. Like, make, make the Mind Flayer an Eldritch God. Go full Cthulhu. It's an Eldritch God. A, like, a cosmic thing that we can't understand that makes people crazy. And, like, yeah. just the mere presence around Hawkins starts fucking with people, which maybe they can do next season. Well, yeah, I like uh, the idea of making Vecner a five-star general, as Dustin referred to yep. him. I like the idea. Mind Flayer's still in charge, but like, no, they've said the Mind Flayer is, was, was just a chill dude sort of thing, just doing his thing in the Upside Down, and then Vecna used him as a puppet for season two and three? Yeah. Question mark? Uh, you know, they did the, it was Vecna all along. Along, right? <laughs> Which is like, okay. But I think they're setting that, so, yeah, the, I, that's a setup, though. Because, you know, Vecna's going to end up getting used by the Mind Flayer. Oh, do you reckon and, that'll be the, the way they do it in season uh, yeah, five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I would do as a writer. I would just freaking go there. Go cosmic. That'd be cool. The thing is, the Mind Flayer was beaten twice as a season villain. You know what I mean? It's like a little bit like, eh, okay, yeah. And I swear to God, if the final dude is killed as the climax of Stranger Things with Eleven yelling at it with a hand up, oh, we got to find someone else to do, Dother Brothers. <laughs> like, That's what we do every single time. No. Well, I think, I mean, what did they say? The, the, the Hawkins and the Upside Down are going to start melding, right? Yeah. Because one will be, get absorbed by the other. So that'll be, that, that's the vision they gave us for the next season. Mm -hmm. I mean, that I wasn't... Could be good, you know? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm on board. I just hope the Duffer Brothers can sort of subvert us a little bit. And, but the problem is it requires setup to properly subvert. And I don't know, it feels like they're playing hot potato with all these seasons. Just like, ah, we'll do this yeah. now. Oof, did that work? It did. Oh, fuck. Thank God. <laughs> like, okay, well, now time jump is, Yeah, the time jump is a necessity because the kids are going to be much older. So how the hell do you do that? With with people in Hawkins, that's going to make no sense. Yeah, I... I you can I don't live here with the hell mouth open. Little Demogorgon's fucking coming out. Oh, taking your um... children... I, I, I feel like every, you'd move out. Everyone would move the fuck out. You'd evacuate yeah. that fucking place, yeah. But apparently loads of people stay in. The, the, like, I don't, I don't know. It's I don't know. We'll have to see what they try and plan with this one. Um, yeah. So, someone I really want to talk to you about. Uh, it's yeah. a bit of a bit old controversial subject for a lot of people. I'm seeing uh, the Stranger Things fans fight about this on their subreddits. Um... What do you think about Max? What do you think about the, the end of her story, quote-unquote? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm... I would have been okay with her dying. I there wanted them go. to kill her. I'm upset yeah. that they didn't kill her. I think it's yep. it's kind of... Um, I'm calling it cowardice, uh, writing-wise. I think that they wanted to have their payoff of... How fucking tragic is it that this girl who's fighting off suicidal thoughts manages to break out of it and get like a, a new understanding on why she should uh, continue fighting? And then she has to go back in with this fucking demon in order to save the world and help her friends. And her friends fail. They can't beat it when she gave them the chance with the bait. Costs her all of like, her arms and legs. She can't see. And then she bleeds out or whatever kills her. I think that's the the darkest and most tragic little story, and it's super meaningful. And then they're like, no, she's alive. And and I think everyone in the audience is like, what do you mean she's alive? And it's like, well, uh, she's alive, but she's not in there. Eleven kind of brought her back. And or it's, uh, she? Yeah, yeah, she restarted her heart, but she's not in there, quote unquote. And so now... Uh, there's a couple of theories about what's going to happen. A lot of people are saying that she'll be used as a vessel by Vecna in Season 5 to fuck with people. I think it's more likely that she'll just be the personal stakes of Season 5's finale, where if we beat Vecna, we can get Ma uh, Max's personality out of him and put it back into her body and she'll be fine. <sighs> Which is going to be lame as oh, fuck. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He absorbs everybody's personalities. 
Now, I hate to do this, uh, Gary, but since you and I are here, anyway. uh, you know, I, I, it's going to happen, especially because, um, look, spoilers, everyone, okay, for, for a certain show called Angel. Do you remember a certain writer killing a particularly beloved character in that? And then uh, yep. after, like, literally an episode later, they had a character in universe state, her soul was fucking destroyed in order for this spell to be yep. cast. Like, she is gone, she is never coming back. Because yep. it's so obvious that the fans would want her back. Obviously they would. They love the character. That's how it works. So you don't just go, he's dead. Or is she? Da -na 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 -na. And it's funny because yeah. you might be like, well, didn't they do that with a certain main character in that series? It's like, well, yeah, but look at the fucking work they put into uh, bringing her back. I was talking to a friend about this. It's like, Buffy's Resurrection might be one of the only times I've ever seen it done in a way that makes you kind of regret that they did it. Um, like in terms of how well executed the repercussions were, right? You get, uh, yeah. it's a spell that barely anybody can cast. It's a spell that when cast, it sends the, the wizards slash witches who do it insane on like dark spirals. It does send Willow into like a power struggle spiral thing. Um, yeah. it was a spell that Willow and Buffy both hate that it was done. It pulls her out of a, a state that she was absolutely happy with. And yeah. then, um, of course, by doing it, they establish in season seven, it gives the first an opportunity to actually destroy like the dimension that is Earth because it's a breach of like natural laws or whatever the fuck. Um, and then, of course, it depresses Buffy and Willow to the point where both of them consider suicide as well. So what I guess I'm getting at, there's a lot of repercussions from this instead of just going, no, they're alive, it's fine, moving on. We're off to fight Vecna and the Mind Flayer. No, th they're... There needs to, you know, I, yeah, I thought more people were going to die. I definitely did. I thought, I don't know if they're going to kill Steve. He seems too popular. But yeah, at um, this point, he's, he's just got hyper plot armor. He gets beaten the fuck up every single season, uh, but he never dies because people like him too much. Yep. And it's true because I, I really like Steve. Great. But I, I do too. <laughs> I, I, I do too. I, I think J Jonathan can die, but um, just because he's. Dude, I don't even think people like Jonathan anymore. Not even the writers like yeah. Jonathan anymore. <laughs> he's like. I, he, he just kind of did nothing, you know, hung out with Argyle. He's, and, um, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you though, uh, maybe this is a hot take. I've never really liked Jonathan. Uh, rewatch the he's show, been kind of there, yeah. I mean, his, um, his creepy taking photos of Nancy while she was dressing that shit was like hard to get over. I mean, do you remember what his reasoning for that was? What was his reasoning again? He, he said, I, I felt like in that moment that you were trying to become someone else. And it, it felt artistic, and that's why I wanted to take a photo of it. Like, oh. Uh, that sounds like a good rationalization it, it, from a stalker. I was going to say, it's just, like, it's just a creep shot, dude. <laughs> you don't try and artify the creep shot. Um, <laughs> now, to be fair, he's he's better in those seasons than he is in, in 4, but I don't know if you remember, in season 3, he's like, like lowered into the position of just Nancy's boyfriend. And all he does in the whole season is basically go like, I don't know if you're right about this, Nancy. I don't know if you're right about this well, or that, this. Oh God, that's my biggest my my complaint about season two and three, and it seems like they dialed it back a little bit in season four, not completely. Is just reacting to to the rest of Hollywood, you know. And yes, we are talking about something we like, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that season two and three weren't affected by Me Too, Times Up, and all the political crap that was going on. It was definitely there. It, it definitely got woke in places, he, um, and it made he, like, characters act stupid. That's wasn't he caught with like problem. drugs in real life or something? The actor, he might have been. It was either that or drunk driving. I can never remember. I always forget. But um, I always remember. I, I remember reading that and thinking, "Uh oh, I wonder what they'll do to him in the show." And if I tell you, man, like watching season four, it's like, wait, do they hate him now because he doesn't fucking do anything in this whole season? Like it's either that or they just don't know. Well, it's like with Will, they they just don't know what to do. With yeah, Will. which like Mike, I feel really bad for the actor because he's really good. They give him like these really small moments where he has to fucking cry his eyes out and seem like he's in fucking anguish when it's been like three scenes of him. And it's just like, God, yeah, it's fucking Will Byers. Like the whole the first season is all about finding him, and now he's just sort of here. And it's like there he is. Look at him go. Well, they gave him something that for five. Like right at the end, mm -hmm. like he he can feel Vecna, like because he was 
brought in there. So he's going to be stranger danger. Dude, he's touched his oh, neck like 10 times across the show. And it, I'm yeah. just like, good God. He, he's he got to be the main character in season five or something. Like, I don't know what they're doing for him. Um, yeah, uh, Mike's got a similar problem. I would actually argue it's the Lenora plot line is kind of fucked. Uh, they did not do a very good job. And that, I'm referring to Argyle, Jonathan, Will, Mike. They uh, yeah. dropped the ball, I would say, on that plot line. It was Argyle's the plot line... Um, Drinker was saying in his video that, like, there's no plot line that you just want to move past to get back to uh, a better one. And I was like, really? I wanted to get past the Lenora one to get to the Hawkins one. Every time we went to the Hawkins crew, I was way more invested. The Hawk, yeah, the Hawkins crew, and uh, I like the Russia stuff, big time. Uh, Argyle's love of pineapple pizza aside, that I totally <laughs> agree with, that makes it the greatest show ever. Um, yeah, I, you know he's just a stoner he's comic relief maybe a little bit overused maybe should have died you can have another guy die you know give give argyle the hero's death like, this maybe is that, this is just season. me but the idea that we're gonna get another season of argyle and not eddie it's like okay <laughs> there needs to be more resolution with eddie at the end there was a dude i just watched the end right before this and man do they drag out the we're walking up to the field and the field oh, is man. The, the cracks are open Listen, and the helicopters are still flying around and i'm like why the fuck is everybody still there when they were showing everybody at the like the center for helping people and stuff and they're walking around i was like where the fuck is my eddie scene where is it give me it where is the eddie scene and then they show Robin, and they they have like fucking five minutes of her realizing there's a girl that works with her that she is interested in, and also this girl speaks a lot, which is just like, like what Robin does. Walled. Yeah, I was it, like, I couldn't give less of a shit about you two. Actually, it's like Molly Ringwald is lesbian with another Molly Ringwald. <laughs> I I don't know why they spent so much time. Like all you need for that scene, genuinely, is um. You know, one of them drops one a thing, the other one picks it up, and they both look at each other, and that's it. You just go, oh, yeah, she's got a chance to, you know, get into know her at her job. Cool. Well, that they... was totally put in there because we need to have the representation. Well, I mean, if they wanted to do that, then fucking will. actually have the... St like, do you remember, those two share, like, what, one scene in the whole season? Like, why is this yeah. getting a finale payoff? No, like, Will's plotline, I know some people have complained about it, but that's, like, way more real. Like, I, you know, we all had friends back in the 80s who were gay. Yeah, and no, like, um, and I think the... Were there, and, like, you know, they get upset. It's like, dude, you're gay. The thing for, uh, as well, for oh, Will, that I have a little bit more respect for is that they've been developing this a bit throughout the show. Will has been a bit obsessive with Mike, and uh, I don't know if you remember, but I don't even like season three, but Will is trying to get them to play D&D &D again, and uh, Lucas and Mike are invested in Max and Eleven, and all the stupid drama they have. Um, but at one point, Will keeps telling them he's annoyed that they don't spend more time with him. And then Mike says, I'm sorry, you just don't like girls, apparently. And, like, Will seems genuinely hurt by that statement. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I get yeah. it. Um, but, yeah, so I was suffering through that and fucking dad scene. used to call him in season one, you know, bad yeah. sticks and, uh, and queer. So mm -hmm. like yeah they, yeah they a lot of them the yeah. yeah um yeah no there's been little references here and there and I'm totally fine with them uh, pushing that on like go right ahead you can you can do some stuff with it though I don't think you should be doing it side by side with end of the world stakes happening it feels a bit weird yeah like ah oh, we're fighting for our lives and he's like they I might be gay <laughs> right at the end they're like she's like you know uh there's bigger things going on. Robin yeah. says that. So yeah. to their credit, they're yeah. like, there's bigger things going on right now than our stupid relationship stuff. I appreciate and, that. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is, it's silly. It's a silly concept that these little kids can jump through dimensions and fight, de you know, demons and stuff. But I mean, that's the eighties part of it that you just kind of have to suspend your disbelief. Um, is there know, a one, it, gosh, that, that scene just kept going with her and the other girl. And then it cut to, the uncle walking up to the Eddie missing sign. I was like, oh, thank fuck, finally. And that scene is one of the best in Stranger Things as a whole. Uh, I forget his name. I think it's Gatton or Gaten something, but the guy who's playing Dustin, man, he fucking did a great job in that scene. So did the uncle. Um, oh, he's a good actor. The kid who plays Dustin, like, good kid actor right there. Excellent That's, actor. And, and I, yeah. I would go as far as saying, like, I love the scene, but it feels so odd that the uncle is the only one we got to see to understand what Eddie did, you know? 
yeah, I mean, it's good that he found out, but he's like the one person who believed in Eddie. It'd be a little bit of, I mean, the, of course they're going to pay it off later, right? I mean, and, they will uh, now after what everybody's been. They will now. They'll be justice for Eddie all, you know, all <laughs> summer. But uh, that's fine because it's from a, it's a pretty good show. It's a pretty good show. That's why Mahler and I are here talking about it. We, mm -hmm. We've been behind the scenes just going, dude, it is nice to talk about a good show. It's not the greatest thing ever. You know, plenty to appreciate. Uh, we are plenty in a appreciate. desert of garbage right now. Yeah. Just absolute garbage. And the fact that Stranger Things like whooped Kenobi makes me so happy. I oh, dude, really not bad. even close. The, when I was watching the first episode of season four, and this was, I have to say, I was going in with the lowest bad faith ever. I was just like, ugh, whatever. I don't like Stranger Things. Do your worst. Um, it wasn't long after episode one that I was like, okay. This is actually like TV. This is good. This is storytelling. I'm picking up loads of subtler things. I can see your setups. When, dude, when Eddie in the D and D game says like it might be a better idea to run, I was like, that's gonna come up later. Yeah, <laughs> like that's the, 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 a lot of these lines feel like lines that are gonna come up later. And um, yeah, Kenobi doesn't do that shit. Kenobi was embarrassing on a TV show. It's a gross. Disney product that's desperate for um, appreciation. This is the thing, man. Um, the love for Eddie just seems 100% genuine. People go nuts over him because he's like a really nice, feels real guy who has yeah. uh, got some genuine love for some music, looks after yeah, the kids in well, the school. That, by the way, was such an easy way to like him immediately. Him talking about how there are kids in school who lose their way because they're like social rejects, but we are the group that they're looking for and you've got to go find them and help them out. And that's the one thing they did get what they, I wish they would have followed through in a couple more care. I'm not saying you had to make them good. Okay. You got to have bad guys. You got to mm -hmm. have bad guys. And they just, uh, so we had the jock, right? Yeah. I thought they would do kind of a Steve thing with him. Like, you know, cause hey, he was a dick. He was obviously a dick, but he's also a kid who's really fucked up. Like this girl he liked is dead. And I understand that they killed him. I do. I understand that like the crack cut him in half. Uh, and, and that's a very eighties horror thing to do. Right. Uh, but I still think, uh, you know, you could have probably done a little more. You could still kill them at the end, but you could have done a little more. I am um, with that. Character. Funny enough, um, on, uh, on Nina's stream, it seemed that the majority agreed uh, we, we, that selection of people, we, we have the hottest take on the internet, probably for the, his name is Jason, the jock character. Jason. And that take yeah, is, yeah. Not that much of a bad guy, actually. No, he was, he's freaked out, right? So you're freaked out in this town. You're not experiencing any of this shit. He watched one of his friends, like, get lifted in the air and just broken into pieces. Uh, you'd be freaked out, too. I mean, if you were raised so, Christian and you're told yeah. that they worship the devil and Satan in all this, this club and they cast spells, they do rituals, and then you see that happen to your friend, I don't think you conclude anything other than the fact that this was clearly a ritual where they sacrifice somebody. Yeah, like, what, what the hell would you think it was? And know? then he, he bursts in, and he doesn't immediately shoot Lucas. He gives him a chance to explain himself, and yeah. Lucas does a piss-poor job. And you might be like, that's, Lucas is just a kid. And I'm like, yes, yeah, so, is, so is Jason, man. So that's my biggest complaint, is there is... And I saw this in Westworld, too, so not to bring that shit in, but, like... And we've brought this up before. When there's chance to defend yourself or explain what's going on, they just have the characters not say anything because it's convenient for fucking plot. Yeah. And that just, I hate that. It's like, no, you explain it. And then the guy can either believe it or not, but you have to like at least try. And that, this series does that a lot. There's a lot of, what's yeah, I, this? I, I, and then there's some staring and then we go to the next scene, you know? That, that it's shit. funny because you have characters like Eddie or Steve or Max where you, you, you're praising all the writing for how well they realize. But then you also have, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick, but like Argyle and Jason and a couple of others where they're designed to just be one dimensional. They have one joke or one mode and they're like, what is Jason's purpose in this story? It's like he exists to get in the way. That is all his job is. He's not really a person, unfortunately, because if he were... You could have written it so that, and by the way, we were, we were all talking about this when we were watching it because, um, I don't know about you, Gary, but I knew he was going to fuck shit up because obviously you could see that little moment in the trailer where Lucas is punching him. I was like, so Jason's going to get in the way and that's going to be annoying. However, how is he going to find them and turn up at the wrong time? 
How would you write that? Because I will. I don't want that to be a fucking coincidence. I hope they do better writing than that. And when we were watching it, we were like, ah, oh, they have to go get guns. And when they turn up to the gun store, loads of other people are getting guns. And it's like, well, still a bit coincidental that he happens to be there at the same time. And I was like, okay, so make it so there's a fire sale. For one hour only in that store, they'll run a 50% off on everything. Because they realize people are getting more and more stressed, and so that'll they'll just be able to sell their whole stock, probably. That would explain why everyone's there at the same time. And then he clocks that they are there, and so he follows them. And you have him, like, he's, he's got two guys with him or whatever, and they're certain, right? They're certain that these Hellfire Club people, they're going to do something evil. They're hiding Eddie, blah, blah, blah. And so then you go, you, you have him see that they drop him off at the spooky house. He keeps following Nancy, Steve, to the caravan. They go in, and then he waits for a bit, and he's just like, what the fuck is going on? What are they doing in there? And he tries to see, and he looks in, and there's no one in there. He's like, what? And he goes in himself. He sees the crack. Or, you know, there's going to be a big hole there, and you can see that there's another world on the other side. Now, you might call it contrived that he would jump through it, but let's just say him and his friends are like, this is our chance to stop them. We've got to do it. And so they jump in, and then he's, you know, fast forward to the part, like, like because he's taking some time. You got Eddie's preparing to defend the world from, from the bats to distract them. Jason sees all of this. He even sees that Eddie dedicates the song to Chrissy, maybe even sees them fighting the bats, and you can have Jason realize, wait, you're fighting the demons. You're not, like, with them. You're not summoning them. And then what if Jason is nearly killed by the bats and Eddie saves him? Why not do that? Yeah. And then at the end, you have Jason saying on the news, Eddie saved my life. The guy died defending this town. He was definitely not involved in whatever this shit is. And, but, but I just... Sometimes I wonder if the writers were like, Nah, it's fun to have just a straight-up fucking bad guy and we get to see him torn in half at the end. Isn't that great? Yeah. That's the part I was like, that was a waste. Like, it was just a waste. He was just there to be bad. There's no resolution. And, you know, we've already got our bad guy. We've got Vecna. Like that's yeah. our bad guy. We don't need other. We've got the general, you know, freaking laying waste to a bunch of innocent doctors who volunteered their time, left their families to to help eleven, are all fucking dead. <laughs> you know, it's like okay, we got enough death from bad guys. Uh, what what we get in good shows is a resolution with that character. It still can still be tragic. It can absolutely still be tragic, but yeah. some kind of resolution. I felt like we got none with him. Like, what about his parents now? Yeah, this is the problem. Uh, the second he got torn in half, like, screaming in agony, I was like, ah, I understand. You you didn't think he was a character either. You thought he was just a piece of shit who deserves to suffer. It's like, that's as far as your thought went with yeah, him when you were writing. and that him. was the problem I had fundamentally throughout season two and three. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. Um, to be fair, dude, the, the opposite of this, in a sense, is uh, Bob Newby from season two, Sean Astin's character. He was designed to be the most likable person ever. And then they were like, and what are we going to do with him? We're going to give him a vicious, horrible, gory death. To make yep. you sad. Like, okay. It, um, it's not very meaningful to me when you do that. Um, meaningful deaths are like what I was describing, I think, with Max. Because there's so much to talk about before it happens. There's so many reasons why it happens. So many choices she made. Meanwhile, Jason fell over. And then he got torn in half. He died thinking he failed the town. He didn't stop the ritual. He couldn't stop the demon summoners and worshippers. That's kind of sad for him. And then his parents will never know why this happened. They'll just know that their son was torn in half. He, yeah. he, he couldn't avenge Chrissy. He never found out how all this worked. He, as far as he knows, he couldn't save Max. This is another thing people don't realize. He's trying to save Max's life in this scene. Yeah. Yeah, there's just so, so many, there's missed opportunities, like the Russians. What happened to the Russians? I, have, I don't know. What, what happened to them? Because I thought one was supposed to come back to Indiana. They were even talking about it, right? What happened to the Russians? I don't know. Uh, this is the thing. Stranger Things is it's so unfortunate. This could have been the greatest show of all time if they'd planned this shit earlier. Because they've just been, you know, they've just been stacking these bricks on top of each other and hoping for the best. They have, um, and uh, I'm sure we'll see them. I'm I'm positive they'll come in after the time jump, and it'll be uh, it'll be after the wall goes down. So it's going to be post communist Russia. Uh, it'll be interesting mm. what we get out of the '90s. I wonder how big the time jump will be. Probably like four years, five years. 
Well, there was an idea of like, what if the last scene of the Stranger Things season five is the turn of the century? Because the the show is so fundamentally eighties, that could be a suitable way to end it. You know? Yeah. It feels like they needed a little more time on that ending. And Sorry, not turn of the century, turn of the decade. My bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Century, decade. What's the difference? What's the difference? Um, time is an illusion. Lunchtime, doubly so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's. It feels like they um, they rushed it towards the end there. I, and I, I, I just thought we'd get a little better tease, other than like Will saying Vecna is still alive. Like we can feel, I mean, I, there's no way they were going to kill him. I just like, nah, he's too good. Dude, it was almost, I think a little bit silly. I, I had Scooby-Doo vibes when they looked out the window and his body was gone. I was like, oh, he's gone. This is spooky little vector. He's right off. <laughs> he ran <laughs> off. Um, and I was a little bit disappointed, I think, with their approach. They were like Molotov and shotgun, which are great choices. But man, if you told me we get one shot at killing the boss of the Upside Down's flesh form, I'd be like, right, we need we need everything. We need grenades, C4. Head. You need to aim for the head for sure. You need some, I would go as far as saying, like, get some kind of explosive on a spear and then fucking thrust that into his mouth and then detonate it sort of thing. Yeah, or chop his effing head off. Yeah, the, the, they even After suggest a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. It's really weird because I saw so many people being like, why did they keep, like, they slowed down Nancy to the point where she's clearly aiming, but none of her shots went to his head. No. And she was blinking on a couple of them too when they went off. <laughs> I noticed that too. And I was just like, why wouldn't you? Everyone, That's why wants, she missed. <laughs> everyone wants to see a headshot, all right? That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I, I, they had an axe. That one of them was holding an axe. And one was of the was fucking the, axe. I said, like, chainsaw. I was like, oh, that would have been fucking chainsaw, cool. Yeah. That, would have, that would have been the 80s as fuck too. With all the... It would have been. Yeah. That would have been. Maybe they're saving that one. No. Maybe they're saving Maybe. It. Do you remember that payoff in. Uh, Buffy, when Giles is like, they're like, you gotta do a spell to get through the magic door, and he just pulls out a chainsaw. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit. Um, it does. Yeah, so what, what so, are the major things happening well, this season? Well, I mean, Eleven's whole journey was just getting her powers back. And again, I'm, I'm glad they kind of sidelined her, and we didn't go into, oh my god, it just... In that that episode in season two where we meet number and number eight's gonna show up again. Oh god, dude, please, please don't. Dude. I think that's another example of them auto uh, overcorrecting. I, I don't even I don't regret them overcorrecting a lot of the time, but like they just wiped them out for season three and four. That that episode, they have. Ne I don't think I've ever seen a more potent response to how everyone hated. It's episode seven, right, of season two. I think. Yeah, um, it's episode seven. Fucking, I remember when this show came out, we were watching it. I remember being so baffled by that episode, and I went on, like, discussions online. Everyone despised it. They were like, what the yeah. fuck was this? Like, why was it there? Get it out. And I think the Duffer Brothers were like, okay, okay, we won't do that again. I swear, we won't do that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> they brought up Mom again. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of stuff I love. I love how they connect it to MK Ultra. I'm all into that shit. So, like, uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's a perfect hodgepodge of 80s stuff and art bell conspiracy stuff it's really cool i like that part uh yeah. dude we, there's parts of poltergeist in this uh oh, do you remember the terminator of, references in season three yeah, yeah. like the, this is what i mean about the show it's like oh there's so much cool shit in here why can't you just be all great <laughs> why'd you have all the cringe thrown into yeah well max you know max is a character we talked about that like finally has purpose right mm -hmm. uh and I totally think they should have killed her. Uh, and uh, because I didn't like the character, the character was annoying. Yeah, I didn't like her either. Uh, it, she, she seemed like a fanfic character that everybody's like stumbling all over to love. It's like, why? No, why? yeah, um, nasty. Drinka, uh, pretty much nailed it in his video because he's going off memory, but um, because if I just rewatched it. She's a different character in season two, three, and four. Um, they have no idea what they were doing with her, she's thrown in. He is the smug asshole character who wants to be a part of their team but also hates them and constantly criticizes them. And then right at the end, it's like, she's on our team now. And it's like, okay. Nobody yeah. gets, like, it's bad enough that Lucas Just doesn't like, have we... a role, but now you've got someone else who doesn't have a role too. Right. So like, and, mm. and I think they've, they've completely fixed that. Like, uh, you know, the episode four was great. Loved the end of it, like everybody else did. I thought that was cool. 
you know, I saw it coming. It was, I did a bunch of shit. I saw it coming. I don't care. It's still good. Yeah, I'm fine um, with it if I see it coming because I think they've set it up, you know? Yeah, properly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it all hinges on, on Vecna. Like the, like the fact that he alone improved this entire season, everything, nothing else works without having a, a bad guy, an antagonist with a voice that we can hear. And we, there's motivation and we understand. And like, uh, that, that was so important to the story. They, they honestly, you know, people have been asking like, Hey, should I rewatch season two and three? And they, I'm sure they've asked you too. Well, they have when we were on real BBC and we both said, nah, you could watch, watch a YouTube as, video. As of having rewatched season two and three, I recommend skipping them. I don't see the point yeah. of seeing them. They just, there's no not point. good enough. They ruin more than they uh, provide. I would go as far as saying, um, and you can jump from season one to four. I've had friends do it and they're like, yeah, I followed it. It's, it's okay. Like, it's fine. Max, they give you all of the context for what she's going through in season four. Yep. Oh, God, um, in that one episode. <laughs> they do. Yep. She's well, letter. That's all you need. I remember what impressed me so much. I think I even sent you a DM about this, because, by the way, for anyone who didn't know, Gary's the one that convinced me to even give this a chance. I was like, nah. And then you were like, no, 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 no. Give it a chance. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, <sighs> fine. Um, so I didn't, I, I definitely, I had like an aggressive lack of care, if there's such a thing for her. When I saw it pop up in in episode one, I was just like, oh yeah, I forgot about you. And um, a friend asked me when rewatching it, it's like, oh, so what, what are her traits? And I was like, I didn't know what they were when I, and I've seen season two and three. So I was just watching and I was like, yeah. And then I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, a brother died um, and that's, that's had an effect on it. I was like, that's way more interesting than anything they've ever done with her. Okay. But, um, by the time she helped figure out by piecing it together how Vecna's killing the victims and then she realizes during it that she's the next one, I was like, wow, that's um, that's pretty good, actually. That was, that was pretty interesting. And I realized what I was, I was thinking about, I was like, oh shit, I actually care that she doesn't die. Huh. How about yeah. that? I don't even know how they did that. Okay. And then, episode four, they have this teenage girl, uh, at least I think she's teenage, I don't even know what the age they are in the show, honestly, because it's very hard to keep track of how exactly the timeline works, but um, the way she deals, like, she basically has already come to terms with the fact that she's going to die, and then, like, immediately starts giving, making sure everybody gets the messages she wants to them, and wants to spend her final days, you know, giving her messages to the people she loves and talking to Billy's grave. I was like, this is um, very mature, and... Like, uh, I have a lot of respect for this, this girl doing it this way. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, of course, how they melded in the mechanics of, like, songs being able to access a deeper part of your brain quicker than your words can. And then uh, I actually quite liked how they twisted, because, yeah, her brother was abusive. He was a horrible piece of shit to her a lot of the time. And then uh, Vecna using that to say, like, you have to admit, uh, you may have been sad or whatever, but you, weren't you also relieved... And I was already like, oh, that's probably true. And then yep. um, and then that, that, that stab right at the end where he's like, don't you wish you could have followed me? And um, yeah, I was, I was fully in. And her escaping, it was great. And that's, I think it makes that episode even more potent that um, he goes back in for the sake of defending her friends and uh, Eleven doesn't come through because she's not good enough this time. She always is, but this time she wasn't. And Max is the one that dies as a result. I like the idea... That it was their plan to bait and kill Vecna, but it doesn't work because he's more powerful than they anticipate, sort of thing. But they yeah. all they almost did it, but then they, I like I said, I, I think they lost their um, they lost their balls right at the end. Yeah, I mean, it. They're obviously gonna bring her back, or they'd have killed her. Yeah, that's but, that's the reality. They wouldn't put her in a coma to just say at the beginning of season five, oh, she died by the way. <laughs> like what? Right. Right. So I yeah I think yeah that was a mistake. Mm-hmm. It, it would you know uh, it's going to be too happily ever after, and I I think they're you know uh, they, they'll probably uh, will they kill Hopper. Nah, they wouldn't kill Hopper. Dude, he's died like seven times. Yeah. You remember when he? Oh fuck! I really hate season two and three. And a lot of people in chat have been saying, yeah, I hate three, but not two. And it's like, no, dude. Season two is the one where Hopper discovers the upside down is infecting the um the pumpkin patch and he just decides yeah. to just jump down and start walking around until he gets knocked out because of the fucking gases of the upside down i remember being like why are you so stupid this is absurdly stupid of you 
Yeah. Especially after season one. <laughs> right? So the, he's all the fucking context. smart in season one. It's not fair. It's he's smart again. I mean, they, again, you talked about this. They, they fixed that. They've made him more badass. Yeah. But it, and and it just felt like they were trying to reduce that character. Well, they were. They were clearly trying to make let's make him dumb because white male or whatever the fuck philosophy is going. And like, hey. Uh, I don't make the rules. I just point the shit out. And uh, I think um, that that they recovered from that a little bit. Yeah, they bring him Hopper's getting coming back a little bit. Dude, I, I was downright confused when he reunited with Eleven and they were like, oh, fuck, I've missed you. Something. I was like, wasn't he like really abusive with her? And then I rewatched season two. And it's like, yeah, they both they both fucking hate each other when they live together. He like shouts at her. She shouts at him. He like threatens to take things away yeah, from that her. That was such a shitty payoff too. For like their their connection is not that strong at the end of season one. If you go back and like watch season one, yeah, he barely knows her. Barely knows her. Yeah. So like to jump right into like I'm petulant teenager. You build up to that. You build up to that because like. Well, yeah, and, and and he's getting like fatherly advice from Joyce, and then he ignores it, and he makes everything even worse. He's like threatening Mike because he doesn't like that Mike's kissing his daughter. I thought it was cringe, man. Yeah, yeah, they they jumped way too into that when they should have had a little more time of them being father and daughter. So, no, yeah, we didn't get pump. to see like what it is None that it. they. Uh, did, look, you jump right to the rebellious phase and it's like 11 wouldn't be rebellious she'd be so happy to have somebody who would take care of her after the fucking shit she was through that's making her like food every day and you know believe me she she'd be much happier yeah and, and don't get me wrong fathers are protective of their daughters but they're not like they don't have to be cringe as fuck where he's literally yeah. telling mike you might have to kill him and stuff and it's just like what the hell um, yeah. A scene I actually quite liked, even though I don't like season two, is when Mike finds out that Hopper has hidden her for a year. And uh, I don't know if you remember, but the, you know, the actor playing Mike, he fucking shouts and screams. He starts trying to punch Hopper until he him. just breaks yeah. down and cries. And I was like, this is pretty strong. You're telling me yeah. that guy is like, oh, you're threatening me? I bet. Like, if you remember, Mike just agrees to not see Eleven anymore after Hopper threatens him. And then they break up because Eleven starts to hate boys. Because that's how great the plot line is in season three. I know. You don't need stupid boys. It's like, okay. It just, you just, you're like, guys, we have limited amount of episodes here. Why are you wasting the fucking timeline right. doing right. this? Stop. Um, but yeah, season four, like, it just no gets back on. fucking dad was going to stop me. I don't care how much I got threatened. Oh, I was going to say, man. This is, this <laughs> is a kid. Right, old man. This is a kid I'll that was fucking punching him. Down. He was punching him when he was way younger. He's older yeah. now and he's scared of Hopper. I was just like, no. What would have happened is he'd be like, are you threatening to kill me? I'm just going to tell my fucking parents and they'll annihilate you, Hopper. Like, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. He'd call the bluff. And Hopper shouldn't even be making that threat. This is why I, I fucking struggle with season two and three. I was like, mm. No. Uh, but again... You know, they work it out somehow when, you know, he's doing his uh, self-reflection in prison when he's sitting there just like, uh. at first he feels like he's, you know, just poison everywhere. And then he kind of gets himself out of that. Uh, I just, you know, I, I, there was a lot of stuff they wasted time on at the end that I would have, I, again, what, what happened to the Russians? Did they come to America? Did they not? Are they back at Hopper's house? We didn't see them, but they were yeah. supposed to. So did they fly a helicopter to Alaska and then take a plane? Yeah, the two days later thing got I was I was right there with you. I'm like, whoa, no. Yeah, it's too whoa. much to even because they want to skip to whoa. when Mike gets back and they reunite and stuff. And it's like, yeah, 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 but there's stuff we gotta do first. They <laughs> clearly didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to get from point A to point B on that one. So they're like two days later. Did you like um do you like the god guy that Hoppa was uh, friends with? Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was neat. I like the um yeah. I like the development of Hopper's history as well. The, uh, the, in a sense, it was his fault what happened to his daughter. I thought that was a decent addition because obviously that's new compared to everything we knew before. But, uh, and it feels like it's his fault. I mean, is it really? His well, fault? Um, he said, right, that like all the people who worked on the same project as him, their kids had birth defects because of Agent Orange working with it and stuff. And he had a kid anyway. And she came out perfect. And he was like, oh, it's great. But then she eventually died. And 
he believes yeah. is likely because of oh, that. It's fucked up. It's completely fucked up. But it's the government. Yeah, and it, well. I just think it was um, it's it's a strong way to develop that idea. I think because someone's had me saying like, doesn't that explain his attitude toward Mike and Eleven? It's like no, man. Like the what happened to his daughter is what gave us the character of Harper in season one. A guy who mm -hmm. takes everything very seriously. The guy was very careful. But very reasonable and understanding like you'll he takes his time to if you watch him in season one some of the things i really like about him is like when people are crazy or rambling and stuff he takes the time to try and listen and then ask them reasonable questions and try and work through the problem um they, it didn't strike me as the character that they turn him into in season three where he's like do you remember all the fat jokes yeah it got weird, man. Like, look at how fat he is, and oh, uh, you're fat Rambo when you want to use your gun. Oh, you, uh, you're so out of shape. Oh, look at, they have like a camera angle where he's watching TV and it'll just be his belly and then you can see his head. And he's like, leave the door up with three entrails. It's just like, I don't remember. This was the character that they were like, they would show him with pill bottles, alcohol bottles everywhere. Yeah. And being like, man, my life is tough because I can't stop thinking about my daughter. And it was just like, you know, it's kind of weird. Yeah, they really went away from what could have been great resolution to go right into let's uh let's vandalize our own character. Yeah, that's what it that's what it came across. A lot of that me. going on around Hollywood. Um but there's a reason <laughs> they fix this because they stopped vandalizing their fucking characters. Bully, you're too uh, young, you're you're not a parent in the eighties, like to understand this. Like, bro, I understand Harper's character. That's all I needed to understand. It's like yeah, well, I mean, okay, so Hopper started acting like like my dad, but like I I pissed my dad off a lot. Like it, it, I earned that shit. <laughs> so like he they needed to show they didn't have enough time, but they needed to show them being happy for a little while. Maybe show some time passing. <laughs> And then getting into the rebellious phase, not just straight into the rebellious phase. That part, well, yeah. especially since they had no connection before that. We just talked about that. Like, go back and rewatch season one, which is very good. Yeah, and she Hopper spent um, she spent more than a have... year following his rules, uh, perfectly. By the way, it was only when she I think it's a scene where she calls him a liar because he keeps telling her it's a particular time they have to wait till before it's over, but it keeps extending. Yeah, yeah. Eleven was downright. Uh, attentive to the rules it's just that the hopper was a really shit dad did a really well, bad we job find of... out later that was part of the deal like he had no say in that so that was kind of fucked up it was uh paul riser's character who was making her keep extending it over and over well again. that's the thing though there's got to be i think hopper's a smart enough guy to make something work you know when, when she says she wants yeah. to go out in halloween with a ghost outfit he has to try and like argue that that could work to bull rise a, I think at the end of the season. I'm just yeah, like, yeah. just fucking do it. Like you'll be fine. Yeah. I, and I think Hopper would do it. Um, oh yeah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Uh, you know. Yeah, the idea because he, he's like, oh, she's got it. Because any child who has to just stay in a very tiny shack for an entire year, like, yeah, of course she's gonna get unruly. But she was pretty good considering. Like it could have been much worse. Um, but yeah. either way, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, the idea that you have conflict between him and Eleven, I just, um, I wanted to see Hopper handle it, not the crazy fat idiot that they decided to make handle it um, yeah. in season two and three. And he's, and he's not fat in season uh, four. No. He's got, he's got Russian prison. Uh, he had the Russian prison workout. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, which uh, I saw some people be like, wait, how did he lose all that weight? I was like, I mean, to be fair. He's in a prison. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Paul Reiser, as in Carter Bur Burke from Aliens. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was funny. I was, uh, I think it was Freaky I was watching it with. He was like, I recognize him. And I was like, he's Burke. Aliens. He was like, oh, shit. It was like, yeah, you can see it now, can't you? Because it's just like, yeah, it looks just like him if you add, you know, 40 years. Right. And he's still alive. He's probably going to get tortured by the government. <sighs> Um, he might do. He might end up being the bridge between them, because I was wondering, can we really make the government an antagonist when we've got the Upside Down is infecting the entire world, or should well, we make the government friendly to a degree? When we last left the government, they were trying to kill a, a young a girl, a little girl. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, they're still going to be a pain in the ass, but, I, but their perspective was that she was killing the people in Hawkins, uh, not... Not the the mind flare, not Vecna. 
So are they going to know? Yes, they're going to have to know about Vecna at this point. There's going to be like the government would be all over this, dude. Uh, they would have been. See, that's been yeah. my problem. They would have been all over it from season two. <laughs> they would have been absolutely all over it because well, they think... would be the government just doesn't let like people like people like Papa run without being having tabs kept on them. I mean, it's compartmentalized. They mm-hmm. get away with a lot of shit. But if like, you know, if something happens, there are fail safes there. And you would think that they would be all over it a little more. Uh, that's I, I mean, like the Russians creating an entire base under american town that was i mean so fucking hey, stupid back in the 80s we sometimes we thought that shit could happen but it can't it's so funny and so stupid because i'm like on the rewatch I, I, i'm well past that now and it's just like they never actually justify why the fuck they go on that adventure at any point like why no. are you doing this why a little kid it's funny as well because they're like you know how did you break in i'm like because your security's so bad Three children managed to get past it. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what is this? Right. Uh, season yeah. three was tough to watch. Yeah, but um, I think that there's a uh, it's it's sharing the the same problem Buffy had as a show where it was like how how isn't this town attracting way more eyes from the government from people from it's just everyone dies here all the time. Crazy events happen. And none of it seems to get out in any way, shape, or form. I don't know if you remember, but it was season three. They finally try and address that in Buffy. The, the mayor is like, "Oh yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I softened it all with 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 higher ups. I, I can, you know, grease wheels. I can keep things." He, yeah, I think yeah. he says like, "When Spike came last year, he caused a whole bunch of problems for me that I had to solve, and like governmental ones." It's like, okay, that's something, that's I guess. Quite... You know, um. But then the mayor dies at the end of season three, so it's like, so now what? <laughs> Who's taking care of it now? Um, but yeah, Stranger Things is like, I feel like season five, it's going to have to be public knowledge, right? Hawkins and the Upside Down, and especially if there's a time jump. Well, I think the go- it'll be co- government knowledge. I, I, they, they could still stamp it down, you know, if they get everybody out of Hawkins and uh, close it completely off. That, that will make sense. It's like, it's an earthquake. Y'all got to leave. We've got unstable, whatever. Uh, there's a super volcano under Hawkins. We never knew. Got to go. Bye bye. You know, that's all you have to do. <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. that would make sense in, in the story sense. Uh, but I, it doesn't seem like they're going to do that. Seems like they brought him back to Hawkins. They're going to stay. There's the volunteers helping everybody. So I, I really don't know. Uh, don't yeah, know happy treason day, by the way. Happy Yay. Fourth of July. I'm going to spend it with a Brit. It it makes the most sense. Um, yeah, dude, the, uh, I feel like I probably know the answer to this question, but I'll ask it anyway. What was your favorite moment in season four? Oh, God. It, of course it was Eddie playing Master of Puppets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also liked Hopper um, cutting off the Demogorgon's head with the sword. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. That was pretty cool, yeah. A little on the nose, but I didn't care. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm down with that. I mean, they had the weaponry there already. Well, that's the interesting thing. I think I would argue season one is the best season, but season four has, like, I think four of my top five emotional payoffs of the whole show. Yeah, well, with Eddie, what I are mean, the other emotional payoffs? So probably the finale for season, uh, for episode four, um... Yep. I think the last moments that Lucas and Max have together, both of them are fucking nailing it, yeah, acting wise. Really and it's tragic. It, dude, it actually made me remember like Fred's death. I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, it's the same sort of shit. Um, especially having Max say, like, I'm not ready. I don't want to die. Like, I was just like, oh, that's tough. That's, that's tough to listen to, especially with the story she's had. Yep. Um. And it, oh, it sucks because in that moment, I was like, you guys, you did it. Good job. You actually went there because it's a tough thing to do. It's a risky thing to do. And then they fucking said, no, she's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll be okay. She's I know. It, uh, yeah. That was fine, though. Like, I, no, the I scene itself was fantastic between those two. Um, Everyone was yeah. talking about how Lucas, the act of him, should get an Emmy for that one. It's like, yeah, he was, it uh, was good. He was like, putting in was, all the effort like for that. It was building up to that. Like the kid did a good job. Um, yeah, I'm like I'm totally fine with. I'll watch this all the way through. I've I've started. Yeah. Um, keep getting interrupted. Yeah. Well, it's the same man. Um, 
The other thing I was just going to mention then, yeah, of course, is uh, Eddie's death scene. Um, the saying that he he like making Dustin promise to look after the the kids that come into the school who, you know, need someone to help them out, and uh, like telling him, you know, I didn't run right. I was like, ah, you did it. You nailed it. It's perfect. Story's over. And, you know, uh, I mean, it's not an emotional payoff, but I think the fix of bringing in Vecna and having Eleven block it out of her memory and stuff and, like, he killed all the kids. I was totally okay with all of that. It was very comic book. So, and that's the way it was supposed to be, by the way. Yeah, like, a lot of people are like, uh, oh, you talk about how it's a retcon all the time. It's like, do you think it's bad then? It's like, no, it's what the show needed. They really needed yeah. this. It, it totally needed it. If it, it, it and I caught that like in this in you know in the second episode and fuck fucking finally we're gonna have a villain who talks yeah you know uh and hopefully it makes sense and it was good enough for me you know I was fine is um there's some things I think that don't quite fit that obviously if they had planned this from the beginning it would have been there would have been way more references to Vecna maybe not the name Vecna but just just you know like hmm, seems like there's someone else involved, or maybe a voice, or... Because some people are saying, you can hear clock chimes at certain points in the earlier seasons. It's like, oh, if they planned this, that would have been way more overt. They would have been planting yeah, little I things can't... all the time, but they just didn't, um, which sucks, but it's, yeah, it's okay. Um, I think they fit it in as best they could, yep. and um, I'm thankful they've done it because the show needed it. Yeah, and it, and it works. I, like, I went back and watched season one, and it, it worked for me. I was fine with it. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a couple little inconsistencies, but it's not bad. I mean, Papa's not in. I just remember him being in it more than he was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he wasn't in it that much. Well, see, that's another so, thing I think they changed their mind on. They were like, if we bring him back, we can redo the origin story. We can make the villain bound to the main character like super hardcore. We can recontextualize the villains of all the three seasons to make this season feel more grand and purposeful. And then at the same time, we can have a journey for her to get her powers back. And we can tell the story of this crazy guy who, uh, who thinks humans are a scourge on the planet and wants to, you know, like, just giving us a straight-up motivation as opposed to just, you're evil. Yeah. I mean, think I, another thing I'd like to see, because, again, you know, hated the Russian thing in season three, but, like, the fact that I don't think you needed that to have a gate open in Russia. They could have just been some one blown out in Russia or whatever. The show's had a so weird they, relationship with Russians this whole time. I feel like they haven't yeah. fully understood exactly what they even wanted to do with it. So they caught a bunch of Demogorgons and they caught the Mind Flayer or a piece of the Mind Flayer. The How? dusty stuff. Yeah, I, but I, yeah. I got nothing for you on that one. I, I don't even, I'm not even 100% clear impressive. of what happened at the end of it. Like, the dusty stuff went into the the, the demogorgon demodogs and then they had to kill them yeah, all Was so that they're all like little avatars that that run right. completely on on mind flare dust mm -hmm. yeah so uh, <laughs> i don't have a better term for it okay <laughs> um and that so the mind flare can break itself up and run its little minions so i mean that that's going to be a tough one to explain now because because they haven't they've been piecemealing the seasons and they have the mind flare absolutely requires little pieces throughout the season then that was always my complaint for season two and three is like you know i would have been fine with a lot of this shit if i known more about the mind flare like why it's what its motivation was um you know, I, th maybe I think they make it, reference to motivations in season two or three at some point because they do eventually say like you made him mad and you shouldn't yeah. make him mad. And it's like, oh, okay, okay, you made him mad. Why? What? Why? What? <laughs> I don't know. He, why is he mad? Because they kept burning his vines and that upsets him. Okay. Yeah, it's very strange. You're like, all right. Um, yeah. Only enough, by the way. More than that, it, I, it needs to be intelligent. That's something I found kind of awkward. Is do you remember the, the big moment in season two where the demodogs all attack the big science building? Yep. And it wipes out like everyone. They all get yep. killed. The weird thing is, a lot of the weaponry and defenses in that building are fire related because they've been trying to burn the vines back over and over again. That's, that's what yeah. We see them do it quite a few times. And season four establishes that a flamethrower, just one of them, can wipe out like seven demogorgon related enemies all at once. Yeah. And it's where did like, the dogs uh, go? 
Are they just did they kill all the dogs? I guess so. Uh, I mean, oh, people are trying to tell me why the Russians are in the show in the 80s. No, I know about... I'm saying why they did it, narratively speaking. What the purpose yeah, of yeah, having yeah, Russians yeah. is. Like, what what are we doing with them? And it feels like the Duffer Brothers aren't quite sure what they wanted the Russian element to be. They wanted it there because, like, they were a big part of the 80s. Yeah. We all understand that. Cold War. Some of us lived through it. Um, a lot of... Uh, very legitimate paranoia mm -hmm. going on a, a, a lot of people try to downplay that but there i mean now that especially since the fall of the soviet union we found out that a lot of that paranoia was absolutely uh justified in a lot of ways they were trying to change our culture through our art and everything and the, there's plenty of uh, information on that um so yeah i would have played more on that than digging out a base <laughs> <laughs> i would have had to just be in russia and like the gate pops open like that would have probably been that would have made more sense mm. it just was a little over the top for me i know they wanted to have a big battle in a mall because malls were so 80s yeah i, I, yeah, I got i got it big flash uh, monster in the in the mall mm -hmm. fleshy monsters in the mall but uh i I mean, again, you could just skip those two completely. <laughs> you don't need them. Yeah. You just need one and four, and you're good. And you're good. And you'll have plenty of time to enjoy it and parse it out because it's going to be years until we get. Uh, well, I, I got a super chat asking if it's okay to skip season three. And it's like, yeah, man, you, you yeah, can't. Yeah, don't totally worry about it. Different. Season three is the one that I think has the lowest reputation from what I see people talk about. There is loads of videos that'll give you a rundown on both seasons in like 20 minutes each. Just, mm -hmm. I would watch one of those if you really need to know what's going on. Yeah, because you. Uh, sorry, I'm not on camera. By the way, my camera just stopped working. And I'd have to back out and come back in. I want to do that. So. Um, you get stuff like Murray's introduction in season two, and it's just like you'll be fine. They kind of reintroduce him anyway. They're like, oh, he's a friend that is paranoid and good with tech and can speak Russian. There you go. Yep. Like, all right. I like Murray. I, I am. Very good. I like Murray as well. Though the one thing that bothers me so much more than it probably should is when I was watching it and uh, Yuri offers them both coffee, I was like, Joyce should take it and she should drink it. Murray should look at him and be like, yeah, no. And, and not take it. Yeah. And then what you should have happen is she drinks it and she starts to, you know, she's walking around, she starts losing her foot in and Murray's like, whoa, are you okay? And then she drops her mug, she falls to the ground, he's like, oh no, and then he gets up, looks around, and before he knows it, he's hit over the head by Yuri with yep, something. Yep. That's how you do it. Like, having the most paranoid character in the history of Stranger Things take a drink off someone he doesn't trust, it's like, nah. Nah. That wouldn't happen. No, and he's paranoid, like, in season four, too. Like, right yeah. up until that happens. Like, he's, you know. But, um, um, he's, he's, uh, I've seen him hated by many people, Murray. Um, I enjoy him. I think he's funny. I like Murray. Yeah, I got no problem with Murray. And I actually... No, Max, Max was the most annoying character to me up until season four. Like, just why? Uh, I think I can agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I felt like she was eating up screen time for no other reason than it's like, we're trying to make Max work. Let us make her work. It's like, it's not working, man. Yeah, and what they did to Hopper. I agree yes. With that. That was, that was yeah. annoying as hell. But... Uh, um, but this was good. I liked. Uh, I got to. See, I got to enjoy this on my. Um, in this, uh, my wife because she's rad. Mm -hmm. um, made me a home theater yeah. in our new house, like as a present. Um, and it's fucking awesome. It was so cool seeing this whole thing on that big ass screen with the projector. The 4K on Netflix is really good. Like mm -hmm. that's that's the one thing that they have over. Any other streaming services, quality of picture. Um, I think Prime is probably the second best. HBO Max, which has probably, arguably, the best content, is shit. Total shit, utter shit. Uh, it's pixelated all the time. And Disney Plus, I, you know, I don't care enough to watch it on my screen. I, I just review shit, so it's on my computer screen. But um, <laughs> it looked, like, quality-wise, the music is great. The, the the effects are pretty good. There's, I mean, there's some choppy stuff in there once in a while, but they were pretty good for the most part. Hey, um, I've said this yeah. before, but like, shows can, uh, how good, have you ever had this where a commenter will say, 
know, your videos are so good, they're not even second monitor material, they're first monitor material while I'm oh. eating. It's like, whoa, that's the ultimate compliment that they're on wow. your first monitor and while you're eating. And then um, I was saying to, I think it was Jay about this show, I was like, uh, after episode three, it graduated from second to first monitor content. And I was so excited for the last two episodes, it graduated from first monitor to TV content. I like set it up so that I could watch it on my TV and talk to people on Discord through my phone and stuff. I was like, that's... That's how invested I am in this being good. <laughs> Please. Yeah, that's a good point. All uh, the like, it was definitely TV content for me. I never even thought about it like that. Yeah, because I don't watch any any Marvel shit. Well, you anymore. know, like Kenobi, like, I I focus on it so that I can give people you know a detailed analysis because I know they want me to to go through it and take it seriously. But I mean, if I were forced to watch it to not speak to anyone about it, just so it would be on this third monitor stuff. I don't care. Oh, it's either. terrible. Was it me or I mean like? Kenobi was shot so dark. It was like Game of Thrones dark. It had like in this extra yeah, was, shade it, on it. It was weird how all the lightsaber fights took place in darkness. And I think Rags was saying like, um, it's obvious because they, they're doing that so that they can coast on the style of the lightsabers lighting up the scenes to just look cool. Yep. I think that's it. Yeah. They didn't want to bother even, with... Even the regular scenes seem dark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like yeah, like Game of Thrones. Remember when they came out and said, "Well, you need to watch it on a bigger TV and maybe a more expensive one." <laughs> Fucking shit, like so out of touch. Uh, and it seems like they haven't learned their lesson because the House of the Dragon trailer was just as dark as all the <laughs> stuff. I'm like, God dang it! Oh, that's the thing, Dude. man. You know, enjoy this little moment of having some fun with TV because we're about to hit a tidal wave of garbage. Oh, we of. Uh, garbage we'll get medical just, soul um, in and among it but hey and <laughs> yeah yeah which i cannot wait for that'll be tv um, content yeah yeah but i'm I'm gonna roll by because i saw razor fist tweeting about it a lot i'm gonna go back and watch them hell mm -hmm. on wheels deadwood i'm gonna get uh, that i'm just gonna rewatch some good shit until the end of the year because yeah i gotta hell get yeah. ready for um, end of august early september we got house of the dragon and rings of prime <laughs> That was, um, I forgot to mention, by the way, because I, I said the first half of it, you know, I was saying that I was curious how Jason would end up ruining the plan. I was really disappointed that a guy walking his dog saw them and then reported it. I was like, oh, yeah, lame. that was that was totally lame. Like a guy walking his dog is going to call the local fucking jocks. I mean, it's like, <laughs> come on, just have him discover but it. It was the guy who said, didn't you hear the kid? Let's all go. It's like, oh, it's that okay. guy. The guy who likes the jocks, I guess. I was like, there was the way better ways to write that. He was at the store, the gun store. Just have him follow him, them from there. That's all you had to do. This yeah. is what I mean about... I don't know if it was about the Duffer Brothers writing. Because, um, you know, like, Kenobi. If someone said, like, oh, what tweaks would you make to save the season? It's like, it's not tweaks. We're... we're we're destroying the whole thing and redoing We're it. We're way out of tweak yeah. territory. <laughs> but like Duffer Brothers like, stuff, a lot of the time is tweaks. Like, oh, you just, just need to put little, this here, yeah, this here. Stuff. Like, okay, I didn't like the end of Papa. Mm -hmm. And I and I, I I'm sorry to repeat it, but like I, I, I just it left a, I don't know, it was sour. Um, I I didn't need L to forgive him, right? I was discussing with my wife. She's like, no, fuck him. This is the way he deserved to die. He left the collar on her. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good point and everything. But he's sitting there going, you have to understand. And and uh, I'm going to say it again. They needed to flesh out, like, what the danger is. I get it that the upside down is dangerous. They've been telling us for three seasons. But, like, give me not every reason. Just give me some. Show me an example. Maybe, like, hey, we've done some research on this. Maybe Paul Reiser's character. We've done some research. And, yeah, it will not only just absorb you know, Hawkins, it'll absorb our entire dimension. And there's, you know, countless demogorgons down there. And, you know, uh, because right now it's a, cr it's a pretty big crack in Hawkins, but like we have the entire might of our military. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, I need to show like, this is a absolutely like a dimension threatening, uh, you know, like a, a foil for, for, for our heroes, not, not it, like you said. So 11 doesn't just end up pointing her hand and screaming at the end and, and beating it. Cause they yeah. cannot, cannot be. Are, the you, way it gets are you saying you wanted to see then where Papa like more thoroughly explained why he's done what he's done and that hopefully she yeah. can understand it. And she doesn't have to understand like, she, yeah. well, she could understand it, but she doesn't have to forgive him. She's like, Oh, I understand, but you're still a fucking prick for torturing me and all this shit. Don't ask, you know, 
I get it. I, that part I get. But yeah, the, like Pop is always like holding back this information that they there's no sense to hold back information. I, we get it with the Vecna stuff because she needed to figure it out for herself. But beyond that, uh, I would, this is your weapon that you want to fight it. Tell her what the fucking danger is. We still, we still don't have a grasp on it. That's all I'm saying. I would have liked a little more on that. Well, um, so are you unhappy with, cause she didn't say anything, right? Like she didn't say anything. Like I felt like there should have been some more said, but it didn't need to be like forgiving Papa. Cause the one thing I'll say is that when the character doesn't say anything, it is kind of up to you what you think is going through her head exactly. And I think it is a little complicated. Like she probably, you, you could infer that she thinks to herself, I do understand why you've done this. This is world threatening stuff, but at the same time, you essentially tortured me. Yeah, and a bunch of other kids. But I'm assuming you're saying you would have yeah. preferred that she say that? That, it, it just, it, it, in his final words, maybe he should have let her know, like, okay, I need you to understand what I did. And mm -hmm. this is the threat, blah, 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 blah. And then she could say goodbye, Papa. Uh, just but begging for her forgiveness, like for what? Like you you tortured her and she doesn't, like what does she know? She doesn't know much more. You brought her back into the fold to get her powers back and said, well, this is, you know, we figured Vecna's back and the eyes are missing. It's like, all right, well, you know. Send in a special forces forces team that you that obviously most of them are gonna die to fucking kill Vecna. <laughs> Just chop his head off. That seems like a, a character you know. opportunity they don't take. Like a military yeah. guy being involved in you know, like the guy who took care of him in episode four in that like John Wick action scene that was fucking awesome. Yeah. Keep yeah. a character like that around for a little longer. Yeah. Why not? You know, it could be fodder. It could be somebody like yeah. you, that that could be a character you can kill, you know? He could like a little quick scene where he's like, yeah, I got my two kids at home, you know, yeah. life, life's great. So, you know, just, just dead well, meat is printed all over him. <laughs> I was talking about this on uh, Nina's stream, but like one of the suggestions to try and fix up the Lenora plot line is to actually have that portion of it start way earlier because that's where Eleven is and the government try and find it early, maybe even before everything kicks off in the Hawkins one. But like, so this guy, you know, his partner's killed. He takes care of him for like a few episodes where they get involved in different action scenes, trying to figure these things out, stay ahead of the government. And uh, he has to teach Jonathan a few things because he has to basically act as his partner until they get to safety sort of thing. And you could um, make it so that Jonathan has some level of purpose instead of just being, I will get high when I'm stressed out and hopefully yeah. Nancy understands yeah. that I'm going to a different university. I can't believe that's it for Jonathan in the whole season. That, yeah, that was really weak. That was really weak. Uh, dude, I was getting really oh. bad vibes from like the first scene he had with Argyle where he was like, he was explaining where he's going to end up for uni and how Nancy's not ending up at the same place. And I was just like, oh, what's what's the payoff this scene going to be that he's discovering he maybe doesn't love it? And then he's just like, go get high. And he's like, okay, dude. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I need a little more. I, um, it, it felt like, oh, we're kind of having fun with this. And it's like, oh, you guys worked on like three we seasons. Talked. I, I'm like, they're totally going to kill him because there's no, the, yeah. he's doing nothing. He's doing nothing. His purpose needs to be to die now. And then Steve and Nancy can get back. But you can always feel a little bit bad for John who sacrificed himself for her or some shit like that. What about you, man? But love triangles tire me out. <laughs> like, yeah, I, it's like, ugh. Because what's going to happen with the Duffer Brothers is Steve's probably going to find some girl, Deus Sex girlfriend at the <laughs> end or something. And, uh, yeah, everybody would be happy. Um, I mean, Nancy so. straight up said to him in season two that uh, she's pretending to love him. And then she cheated on him um, with Jonathan. So, Steve, you can do better, buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nancy ain't all that. No. She's too skinny. Too skinny. Girl needs, a, girl needs a cheeseburger. Well, he is, too. They both need to eat. I just, you know, what? I just want, I just want more scenes of Steve hanging out with Dustin. Those two are funny together. Looks good enough for me. I don't need no Nancy. Yeah. A kid playing Dustin is twenty now. <laughs> 20. I think there's an interview where they're answering questions, and someone starts their question establishing that, and I think the actor for Steve is like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. He's like, "You're 20? <laughs> Damn, Damn, dude. Go to Vegas in a year. All right." 
Ah. Uh, so far we've come. Yeah. Yep. Uh, how you doing, man? How am I doing? I'm doing good. Good. Uh, it's good. What is it's coming to dog? 11 p.m. for me, so it's, you know, it's still fine. Okay. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm probably going to have to let my dogs out. My dog has been staring at me for like 15 minutes in a minute here. You might have to carry it for a second, but... Uh, Very fair. Yeah, how are we going to do this? Because I'm sure you've got Super Chats. Um, super chats. I mean, you, the way. I think I have like 12, so it shouldn't be too hard to get through them. Okay, because I can stay through that. I mean, it's not like I'm going anywhere. <laughs> it's not like, uh, yeah, I'm staying here. Well, I mean, I'll stay as well for uh, for doing some of yours if you want. We could, we could take it in turns yeah. even if you want. Yeah, we could. Well, why can can you read a couple while I my poor dog? Oh well, I can't hurt. read yours, obviously, but yes, I can read some. Yes, you... <laughs> I mean yours, of course. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, sure. And, uh, I'll be right back, and mm -hmm. and maybe I can try to get my camera working. Sweet. All right, all righty. Mm -hmm. man. So, uh, Russia arc had zero impact on anything. Total filler. So, funnily enough, I would have been fine with it if it didn't reflect in any way the stuff that Eleven and the, the Hawkins gang were doing. I'm fine with an, a plotline being that we're trying to get Hopper saved from Russia, and that the big payoff is that they get him out. That's fine with me. I feel like it gets more embarrassing when they try and bind it to the Eleven plotline, where Hopper was like, ah, you see, us killing a bunch of Demogorgons will help. It's like, okay, uh, I don't know about that, but okay. Okay. Uh, the show has about 27 too many characters. I don't even think I disagree with you. I think that um, whenever we get characters that have a lot of decent work done for them, a lot of decent writing, there are other ones that suffer big time. Uh, I think it's become clear that the Lenora plotline is filled with characters that just didn't get the attention, detail, or I guess dimensions that they needed. Um, at the sacrifice of basically the Hawkins plotline. Unfortunate, but there we are. And uh, this problem wouldn't be happening if they had less people to write for. Which is interesting, because the season is so long. I didn't think they'd be able to do it. Uh, Jack and Hagar was the great Russian guy. Hi, Wombo. Hello. And yeah, uh, the actor who played Jack and Hagar, I think is how he says it in the show, is the one that played the Russian god. I knew I recognized him, and then I googled it, and I was like, oh my god. Uh, can we talk about how stupid the bad general was, though, willing to murder government agents and innocent civilians because he has a hunch that L is doing bad with zero evidence? I think I can agree with that. He was a bit stereotypical. Um, I think he said, like, what's more likely? Uh, the science project has gone run amok and killing people again like has happened before? Or there's a demon and an alternate universe and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, man, don't they have evidence of this? Don't, don't, by now, that the alternate universe is a thing, and the, the Upside Down's a thing, and... Do they not have cameras and, and, and testimony and stuff? Like, this general seems to be stuck all the way back in, like, early season one. Like, he seems to have no idea what's happening. It's kind of weird. And the whole, um, murdering innocent civilians... You might have to remind me on that one. I can't remember if... How many, how many people does, uh, does he kill? <laughs> does he kill a whole bunch of people? I don't, I don't remember. Um, obviously he kills the, the agents, or at least tortures the agent. I'm assuming he killed him as well. He wasn't on that security level. The thing is, he seems to outrank Dr. Owens. So you'd think Dr. Owens would be able to, like, inform him, but I guess it's all compartmentalized to the point when no one knows what, uh, Owens or Papa were doing. It's like, okay, um... I'm not gonna say it's a flaw, necessarily. I think I need to rewatch it to see if I think it fits. Um, I just would have thought he'd know, you know? Uh, they made too many characters in order to meet diversity quotients. Now they're stuck with them and have to force 127 story arcs, not just two or three great ones. Well, to be fair, there was three or four storylines, I think, in this, right? That's how they did it. And I think they could have been better. I think the Lenora plotline could have been way better. It just wasn't. Um... I, uh, but they definitely have shoved a lot of characters into the show now. Which is another reason why killing several of them would have been perfectly reasonable. They could have done it, but they didn't. Um, I wonder if they're going to give Max the Fred treatment, her body, but someone else driving. That is one of the theories, that she'll be possessed, uh, she'll be vesselified, 
It's possible. I suppose we shall see. They should reward people for paying attention? Yeah, I totally agreed, man. And I think you both get rewards and punishments with this season for paying attention. Uh, there's some stuff that doesn't make sense. There's some stuff that you can see coming because of it. Kind of wanted Jason to get forced into the Upside Down to see Eddie's sacrifice, and then he tells Hawkins about him and clears Eddie's name, though that's another character they would have to deal with. Uh, yeah, man, that's. I think that would have been a way more interesting payoff. I think it reflects the Duffer Brothers writing for someone like Steve, where he's going the way of Jock, who's an asshole, but then they pull him back, and they're like, actually, he's a human being. Like, hey, nice. And they could have done that with Jason, but they made him just, you know, archetypal bad guy. Which, you know, I'm not going to say you should never do that. It's just that it's just, I just find it less satisfying, that's all. Um, Eddie playing Master of Puppets is badass MVP of the season. Dude, that's like one of the best scenes just ever. But um, I might be a little bit biased. I do like metal. You know, Steve's only alive and good because of Joe. Because of Joe? I recently rewatched season one and two. Who's Joe? Who am I misremembering? Only alive and good because of Joe. People like to say that the um, Steve became good after he got like thrashed by uh, Jonathan. But uh, I can't even remember. Jonathan, Joe Mama? Joe Kiri? I don't know. Hey. I'm hey. Back. Hey, hey, hey. Just reading out some, some opinions. From, from okay. the chat, you know how it goes. Good. Jason is going to have a Darth Maul return, though his hatred of Eddie and <laughs> through his hatred of Eddie and Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside, so glad they fixed Hopper and added depth to Sarah. Yeah, uh, I'm glad they got him back on track, and hopefully they they maintain it for season five. Hopefully he's not a joke. Hopefully he like actually leads. It would be nice if Hopper led them properly. Yeah, you know? like he's supposed to, right? Mm -hmm. Um, um, I think I think Joyce not being a manic, freaking uh, neurotic, uh, through an entire season was was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. I like Winona Ryder. I like her always... too. Um, I think she was at her best in season one. Uh, mm -hmm. I think she really tried hard to pull off the whole like a mother who refuses to give up on her son, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I felt like in season two it got a little bit silly when she basically just repeated the whole plot line she had in season one. Mm -hmm. um, even to the point of redoing like, oh look, she follows the lights and gets an alphabet. And this season it's like, oh look, she follows the drawings and creates a whole map of Hawkins in her house. It's like, ah. Uh, That's coincidental. <laughs> That's coincidental. Uh, Max was a woke diversity character they're stuck with. That's why she made no sense from show to show and season to season. She can't die. I th I'm pretty sure after what we just saw, yeah, they can't kill her. I I'm really disappointed I to agree. see that they can't kill her. That sucks. Um, as for, yeah, like, I she makes Max no Max sense, I mean, if they could have made it make sense, you know? But they did, and, like, they blew the chance of making her, like, have a real arc, because, like, oh, she was insufferable and unlikable because she was popping pills and suicidal. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, you... And, that, and then she got through that, and then, like killing her would, I mean, it's it's effed up, but it would make sense if, like, story wise, it's they, kind of what you should have done. That's the thing, man. If someone said like they can't care, I'd be like, yeah, well, they shouldn't have built it this way. Then they should have uh, come up with a different plan. If you're gonna put her against Vecna and then have Eleven fail to kill Vecna, you know what that means, right? Yeah, she dies. You gotta she dies. have her die. It makes you hate Vecna more. See, yeah, that's yeah. That's why back in the day when villains used to kill people you liked, you may, you hated them. <laughs> That's why you hated them. You wanted to see them get their comeuppance. And that would have been um, a great motivator for everyone on the team because they all like to. There you go. Which, by the way, again, the Fred vibes. Remember, everyone fucking hates Illyria and, and everything that happened with because Wolfram and Hart, like, don't even like Illyria. And uh, it's, it's, it's just, yeah, because when everyone likes a character and then they fucking killed... It, it, it's a great motivator. It is. And, the, and, and they managed to make Illyria fucking likable before the end of the season, which is crazy. That's one of the when most unreal things it. I've ever seen in writing. She had like six I episodes. You're like, oh, I kind of like Illyria. <laughs> so like it's, yeah, it's, 
It's Dude, nuts. talk about subversion. Her whole plan is... This is why, by the way, that if me and Gary ever actually talk about Buffy and Angel as a full topic, you'll be here for 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. You have Angel Season 4, which I stand by as the worst fucking thing ever. Uh, Jasmine, she's this demon that wants to take over Earth. When she finds yep. out she can't, because they're really good at writing, they just have her go, fuck it, I'm gonna kill everybody. And it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, they did it again in season 5 of Angel, but they changed their mind this time. Illyria's goal is to take over Earth. She finds mm -hmm. out her whole army have turned to dust over time, because she took too long, and that's yep. it. They're all gone. And she fucking, like, falls to her knees, and then she starts to ask existential questions about what she's even supposed to do anymore. Because yep. that is how it would probably go. And then she decides she's gonna hang around Wesley to try and understand the world better, and hang around Wolfram and Hart because they're the most powerful organization on Earth. I was like, mm -hmm. uh-huh. She doesn't just go nuts and start killing everybody. <laughs> it's like, interesting. Like, I need to figure out a plan B. Mm -hmm. right, this is what I'll do. And then she eventually loses stability in the body. Powers are taken. And then uh, Wolfram and Hart's sort of ac acolyte beats her the fuck up. And she has to actually join the team because she's, uh, she's not too great on her own anymore. She's humbled. Yeah, man. It's good shit. And then when Wesley, you know, goes, she gets mad. Oh, yeah. He gets uh, fucking mad. He punches yeah. a demon's head off. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, like the, the, I don't know. The, the, it's just like we've seen similar storylines play out, and uh, Stranger Things. I just think they they misstepped because they in the Ryan room they were like, we can't kill Max. We can't. Uh, it's too scary. We we can't do that. Got to come back. Yeah. Like. They, I don't want them to do what this time jump is. Everybody's moving on with their life now. We're going to get jobs and careers, and we're going to college. It's like, no, no. The crack, you guys know that the Upside Down is now coming into our Earth, and you have the most information aside from the government. You've been fighting it all along. You are going to spend years planning to fucking stop it. They even say it at the end. It's like, no, we got we got to kill this thing. We got to kill it. Like Mike's like, hopefully it's dead. And yeah, Will yeah. goes, no, it's not dead. It's up Man, to them. Someone in chat was just talking about it. I was like, oh, fuck. They missed out on this too. Like imagine the season ends with she does die. And then as you pan over like a montage of how everything starts moving on, it's backed by people reading the letters she wrote them. Because oh. like that's, that's something you could have done. Yeah, and, uh, that was good. She wrote them assuming she was going to die. Like, that's yep. perfect. Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm going to read a couple of super chats here. Mm -hmm. I've, got, I've got a few. Thank you, guys, by the way. Uh, we have, I love season one. Season two was flaky. Season three was Rise of Skywalker bad, in my opinion. I agree. Uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't get... 30 minutes in the first episode of season four rehashed. None of the characters changed. They do. Well, they do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Max and Hopper are probably the best changes they made in season. Four. Absolutely. Like I, I'm telling you right now, I hated the character of Max and it made me like roll my eyes at watching the show for season four. I'm like, cause I was convinced it was going to be worse. Mm -hmm. And even like in the first episode, I was kind of feeling like you. Uh, Birdman 520, uh, 21, 21. Uh, thank you for the $5. And I stopped watching it after the first episode. I'm like, ah. but then, you know, my wife's like, oh, we got to watch it. I'm like, okay, I'll watch the first episode over again, which I did. And uh, totally started getting into it after that. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, this is pretty good. I'm liking this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wasn't, you know, I, I, Jeremy had said he he had liked what he had seen, but I wasn't listening to a lot of people. I, I, you know, I was kind of secluded and uh, walked out of like, oh, maybe, maybe it was just me. Maybe I've got Stockholm Syndrome. Maybe I just, there's like a reverse Stockholm Syndrome. Like there's so much shit out there that, or the Ritz Cracker, you know, the starving man with the Ritz Cracker. Right. But uh, no, I, I liked it. I thought it was, ter ter it's not perfect. It's, it's like, Eight out of, th I don't grade, seven or eight out of 10. You know, it, it definitely has some big gaping plot holes. Uh, but I think the characters carry it to where I give a shit enough to, to want to see it through, which I can't say much 
about anything I've seen lately other than a couple of movies. You know, there was a time, Mahler, where a year would go by and I could I can name you five, six, seven, eight things that I really liked. Yeah. Yeah, man. Same. Can't do that anymore. No. Cannot do that anymore. And uh, um, well, I was saying to you, like, uh, I saw this and then rewatched it with some friends during Kenobi releasing. And seriously, going from Kenobi to any episode of season four of Stranger Things, it's the difference between watching a story unfold and watching this gross puppeteering of nonsense. And so it just, it, it makes it better because I'm just like, oh yeah, right. The story is unfolding. Characters are changing. People are going through things versus, look, it's Kenobi. He's got a blue lightsaber. Look, he said hello there. <laughs> Seal clap. <laughs> yeah, that's what we have right now. So, okay. yeah, like, I'm, I think I like this season more than uh, it is exceedingly well written or anything. Um, I, I'm wearing it on my sleeve. Like, this shit, the, the, Eddie as a whole is enough to make me hyper biased toward the season. Um, when do we ever get something like that as metal fans? Like in a mainstream thing. Never. When do we ever get a montage payoff of a song from fucking Metallica? And not only is the Metallica song there, we have a character playing it in universe with a guitar. Like that doesn't happen. So um, it's hard to hate it too much, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, I, 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 I can't. Uh, I've it's it's been the most enjoyable thing to watch in in a while in a while. I mean, I really like the Northman and I really like Top Gun. So it's it, mm -hmm. you know, we've gotten some good stuff. Uh, but I've also watched so much crap, and we're so on the doorstep crap. of Thor: Love and Thunder, and we're in the doorstep of Thor: Love and Thunder and She Hulk. It's gonna be great, exciting times. Yeah, um, Joseph Fazio. For dollar ninety nine says thank you very much. By the way, says uh, Hopper is Red Guardian. Uh, Hopper's better than well. He turned in the Red Guardian in season two and three for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, because like, Red absolutely. Guardian's whole thing was lol. He is fat and stupid. It's like okay. Sorry, I'm like my my dogs are. I'm alone, right? So mm -hmm. my dogs just want to look at me and hang out <laughs> with me now because they don't have the kids or anything. It's like guys, I'm working right now. Guys, I'm talking about a TV show. I'm talking about a TV show. Don't you understand? No, dog just does not care. You can probably hear her panning. <laughs> Is that you? Oh, now you stop. Okay, fine. Oh, go lay down. Sorry. Go stop. I just fed them too. They have no excuse. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. God, that was good, good girl. Um, Jens, Jens Jurgensen. For 100 Danish krona. Uh, hail to the Dutch farmers, by the way. Um, happy treason day, you ungrateful colonials. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm happy. I, I wish my camera was on because I have my Captain America stripe shirt. It's like his costume, right? So it's got the stripes on the bottom. I've got my Stars and Stripes bathing suit on, and I've got my Stars and Stripes white trash straw hat on which you guys saw for like a second but then my camera froze i got all themed for it and everything okay though i'll be jumping in my effing pool after this uh because it's fucking hot hell yeah it's 100 degrees again um zaro i'm gonna say zaro because it's x-a-r-o for five dollars says uh thank you very much vecna is the only is only alive in Max right now. If she died, he'd probably have to die too. Huh, that's a good okay. Uh, he just needs another body or entity to uh to fully control. Well, his body got left. His body yeah, was gone. I the way I, I mean, see it is a burned up. I mean, maybe. But. A lot of people are trying to rationalize a way they can develop this that will be better than simply bringing Max back or bringing Vecna back fully like whatever and I'm just like I hope you're right guys I do I hope, oh I if hope. they bring her back as Max but it's Vecna I I'd be okay with that I um what I wanted when and this is something I was talking to my friends with when we were watching it I was like oh, of course when she says no about Max dying 
what she's doing is she's going to put her hand on Max and, like, pull the personality out of the dying body and thus, like, carry Max with her in the same way that Vecna does with his victims. You know, Eleven can use Max's, um, let's call it, essence and, and, and keep it within her. Max lives on through Eleven. And I thought even then, like, moving on from it, maybe that that can help Eleven's power, that she would have someone within her as well that can draw on memories of love, that can help if, you know, battle Vecna's memories of rage, or something like that. But no, that that's not that's not what they were doing either. So I, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure exactly where they're going with it. I guess we'll find out. Well, yeah, well, Max is absorbed into Vecna right now. That's why she couldn't see or hear any, you know, couldn't see or feeling anything, because she was detached from her body. So... He's still alive, so she's in him. Uh, that's why they showed Eleven going into her head, and there was nothing yeah. there. Yeah, and nothing there. So, it, um, I agree with you. If she comes back as just a vessel, and that's it, I, I'm fine with that. But I, I just don't trust the Duffer Brothers. They're bringing it back. Nah, nah, they're gonna go. Uh, they're gonna go happy with that one. Yeah. Um. Uh, we got Mikey Gusler for five five dollars. Oh, Mahler. Uh, did you like Jay's quote from Kenobi? Luke had more. Luke had a moment where he was thinking about striking Ben, and they made a bunch of man babies upset. Uh, yeah, Jay Bowman. Um, he, Jay? That's the one from Red Letter Media. He's he's just for some reason he refuses to understand what anybody's point regarding Luke and TLJ is. He for always he'll always reference it as the most interesting thing TLJ did and it made a bunch of man babies cry. And he's talking about the utter assassination of Luke Skywalker for some reason like that. Um it's really weird because it's a channel that seems to care dearly about keeping people in character. Um and then simultaneously they're like, I was totally fine that Luke is fucking drawing a saber on his nephew. Because he had a bad dream. It's like, yeah. you guys insane. Like, that was a terrible idea. You know what? It goes against every single Star Trek video they've made. Dude, uh, that's the, the reality. A, mean, lot like... of, a lot of people are like, you shouldn't judge them that way. They don't care about Star Wars. It's like, Red Letter Media don't care about Star Wars. Like, that built their career caring about Star um, Wars. It's their entire channel. It feels weird to me that they just gradually stopped caring about consistency within the writing of Star Wars. I mean, if they uh, did, fair enough. Yeah. But, like, you just made a Picard video telling you how much you cared about Picard and how you had to let go because you were caring too much. Yeah, and a lot so, of the logic they use where they're like, just stop. I think Rich literally says, if you just stop caring about things making sense in, in Star Wars, you'll enjoy it. And it's like, why couldn't I just say that about Star Trek? Well, yeah, like, uh, Picard and Kenobi are the same bad. They are the exact same bad, not giving a shit about what came before, vandalizing your your titular character because it's far more interesting to you, the quote unquote creator who's involved, to tear that character down because it just looks like another white male to you. That's the same kind of bad. That's the same fucking kind of bad. Uh yeah, it makes no sense. It just it's clear that like they don't care about Star and just say that like I don't give a fuck about Star Wars anymore. I don't either. I I I'm right there with them. I could care fucking less. Um I think you can still what surprised me with Kenobi was just how bad it was. That's right. I thought Disney would at least fuck I mean like dude, this is kind of it. This is it. You need to, otherwise you're just going to be making um, like Filoni Star Wars. You're going to be making extended seasons of Rebels and Clone Wars for the rest of time now. Like this is the one place you can go where you, there's probably a story to tell that should be a big hit. And it wasn't, it, it wasn't, you know, uh, I'm, you know, it, it wasn't a flop in the sense of like, uh, w there's no way to quantify it because we've never seen any fucking numbers, any real numbers that weren't yeah. from Disney or Roku or whatever. I bullshit show us some numbers. If it was like the most watched thing ever, give us some real fucking numbers and not minutes. Um, but it got beat by stranger things and top gun and the Johnny Depp trial. It was like the fourth most popular thing is star Wars thing. <laughs> And and it was shit. It was so bad. You made well, dude, Darth Vader uh, look dumb. After the hype and the discussions and the coverage of season four of Strange Things, like I imagine the most they'll ever have tune in will be tuning in for the premiere of season five. It's gonna yeah. 
people are going to be What's interested going on right now we've got you're exactly right so like we're talking about stranger things positively eddie is trending people are talking about max and it, the vast the, there's not a split fandom here there's some people who just don't like it, and that's fine i understand why you don't like it i get it yeah but like as far as the fandom within stranger things most of them are very happy right now that's called a success that's what it's success is not look at all those racist fans complaining about our black character that we shoehorned in you know it's like uh, that's not a success kenobi you know what having to lie having to go on you know having people on reddit positively review bombing kenobi to keep it from being <laughs> right that's not a success okay that's well, a yeah, failure dude, you know we covered it in some of the middies but just like the fans of star wars are at the point where they they've started saying you know the ot was shit too so yeah. whatever <laughs> it's no. like, oh, no, that's man. really been prevalent uh just in the last couple days on twitter when i when i put up last night that uh you know disney will remake episodes one through six and they will suck and i mean it i've been saying mm -hmm. it for years but now uh you know i there's that article from screen ramp two days ago yeah it's from screen ramp they always put up stupid shit but it's like yeah um kenobi's story is too restrictive so they need to remake a new hope so we can get more kenobi it's like what <laughs> what oh see that's but that's i'm telling you that's been their plan all along they didn't pay this much for star wars to not eventually remake it yeah. they just didn't so no but this is stranger things Four is a success and it's like it's one that came out of left field for me anyway i just didn't think they would be able to write the ship i never thought they'd be able to get this yeah. to this level again i thought they'd it's fucked it up unprecedented so um i you know there's always been like one bad season that you can recover from but i mean yeah. like two like not like very good seasons so far below what the se season one was it would be like westworld like writing writing the ship right now yeah, which, <laughs> which, <seems> it did. <laughs> which it did not <laughs> which it did not oh uh, also i'll be right back i'm just going to tell you real quick yeah yeah go ahead go ahead yeah i watched westworld last night and um holy shit is that a dumb show <laughs> now it went from so smart to so dumb uh, because uh, Jonathan Nolan is no longer involved with it in any way, shape, or form. And you can tell. <laughs> you can really tell. Uh, Bubba Doom for $10 says, thinking of the 80s, does anyone remember the series of ch children's mystery books from Hitchcock? The Three Investigators, Jupiter was awesome. No, I don't. I don't, Bubba Doom. I'll have to check that out. No. That's interesting. Mikey Gussler, by the way, it's great to hear from you. Thank you for the $5. Uh, bass player to 2011. Iffy for $5 says, Jason is on the same level of Henry Bowers in the made-for-TV fi uh, It film. No character at all, just there to be an arse. Yeah. And and I was kind of hoping that they would do a, a Steve-ish thing with him. Because that was one of the coolest things about season one was Steve started out as kind of a prick and he kind of, but he evolved. He evolved as a character. I like to see that. And and you can do it with bad guys too. They can still evolve and be bad. I thought Papa was a little better, but I just wish they would have done more in the end. That's me though. Didn't kill the whole thing for me though. Uh, Eddie Munson character greater than all Kenobi characters says Justice Fat Seagull for two, uh, Steven Seagull, uh, for two Canadian pesos. Could not agree more. Could not agree more. Oh, we do have Cobra Kai at the end of the year, don't we? That's good too. Speaking of good characters. Uh, Edward Morris for four ninety nine says, "I like Jonathan, but him getting killed off would be a good character opportunity for Will. I think it would be two. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think it also would be back. two. I think it would give Will more to do. I want to see Will get more to do because uh, I I agree with Mahler. I think the kid's a good actor. Um, yeah, I, it's just that if 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 they've lost faith in writing 
uh, Jonathan some way, then yeah, use him to die. I guess use him, use him. Yeah, well, sh- but have him go out like a like a fucking Chad, you know, like yeah. that. That would be that would be great for his character, you know, like saving his brother. Like, what more noble can thing can you do than save your fucking brother, yeah. your little brother? So big brothers are supposed to do, you know. I mean, like living would probably be better, but if they have to die, do it saving your little brother. Wait, why did uh, someone in chat said your hard drive needs checking? Seriously, dude, did something happen while I was gone that made noises? Or I don't know, maybe. My, com- I'm on a backup computer right now. That's that's really needs to go to the shop. So I don't know if it's. Uh... I thought I muted, but if it didn't, whoops. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Oh, uh, I don't know if it was me or you. Yeah. Well, because I am worried about my computer. It's still struggling along. New ones on the way. That's good. I mean, your your audio was doing a. It wasn't like bad. It was just like a little chop once in a while, but mm. it's gone now. It's fine. All right. My mine is going back to the shop like right after this fucking live stream. It's like this is the last thing I'm doing on this one. I'm gonna have to go back to the other one. I have two, so. Uh, but this one I paid a bunch of money for. It was custom, and it's just been shit since the day I got it. <laughs> and I've waited like a year and a half to fucking send it back. Uh, Nerdrotic, there has been a shooting today in Illinois. I want to give you a shout out. May the wings of liberty never lose a feather. Uh, was it the one yesterday or like another shooting today? I know. I know there was the 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 guy shot at the cops and the cops shot him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that that and the, that was no, it's Ohio. And there was like a little bit of rioting, but it's like uh, you know. Don't shoot at the cops. They probably won't shoot you back. Probably not going to promise you. Try not to be in those uh, situations. That's what I, that's what I say. Hi Q, thank you for the five uh, British pounds. Um, it, there's a shooting every day here, every single day. Uh, there are people getting murdered left and right in Chicago, and you never hear about it. You never hear about it. Uh, same with Oakland. Same with Richmond. Same with East LA. There is people getting mowed down every single day, but you don't hear about it because it's not good for the narrative, unfortunately. But that's uh, the price of freedom. Price of freedom is risk. I know it sounds cold-blooded, but it's true. Uh, Mikey Gussler for $10 says, so the scoopers said that Superman will be in Black Adam, but they won't show his face, only his suit. Wow, I'm not surprised. I'm saving my money. Film looks boring anyway. Hashtag restore the Snyderverse. I it looks boring to me too, Mikey. It really does. Black so Adam. they still don't know what they're doing with Superman then. No, I mean like it, it, if Zasloff is this genius that everybody says he is, then he'd be talking to Henry Cavill and signing him and get getting Matthew Vaughn, who has been saying for over a decade that he's got a great Superman story written by Mark Millar. I would just say, okay, I'll let's try it. Let's try it. Matthew Vaughn's very good director. Mark Millar, good comic book writer. And I think Vaughn could probably tweak any script. I'd love to see it. But Mikey, I'm with you. Black Adam just (laughs) fell asleep halfway through hearing about it. Saw the trailer. Didn't didn't mean much. Part of the problem is The Rock. I just see The Rock. I don't see Black Mm. Adam. It doesn't look like Black Adam to me. It looks like The Rock. Uh, Edward Morris for $9.99. The Duffers have said they purposely didn't answer everything in volume two because they wanted to answer it in the final season, which is fair enough. Absolutely. I'm fine yep. with that. So, so the reason why it's stuck in 83 will be revealed later. And I'm cool with that. I was just asking if they did say anything of uh, the, the, the stuck in 83 thing was, I think a good bit of information to be honest with you, that I look forward to seeing answered. I have my theories but I'm glad they didn't answer it that, that this season. So I'm right. I'm with you. Uh, Buford T justice for $10 says another problem I had was they go to a military surplus store and they leave with only one gun. Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe like load up handguns, uh, uh, freaking hand cannons, like something that would just blow his head off. I mean, a shotgun's good. A sawed off shotgun's good. Yeah. And this is back in the day when, like, you could buy guns and there's no background check. You just go and get them. 
Yeah, man, I just feel like this. You just want to buy every weapon possible and use it all on him, don't you? I would, for sure. I would for sure. Did you get you got some super chats over there? Yeah, I can read some more. Yeah. Uh, I stopped watching after season two. Would I have to watch season three to understand season four, or could I just skip to season four? Like, yeah, you can skip. Skip, skip, skip. To be honest, dude, skip. when you find out a plot summary of season three, you won't believe it. You're like, what do you mean, <laughs> dude? It's the fucking. I've, I've watched. I've watched him, and it's you're like, whoa. The ice cream store workers like... stumble across a Russian experiment below an American mall. You're like, whoa, what? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's... Hey, it's Space Wizards for children, okay? It, it is. So don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. Happy Britain Lost Day. Oh, man. Long man and nerd. Yeah. Well, happy, yeah. happy good job, America. Happy, happy nice, nice job. We're not doing that great. Mm -hmm. see, the cool thing about our country is we're run by an incompetent, you know, uh, senile, uh, illegally voted in shithead. Uh, but we still love our country, and uh, he'll be gone in a couple of years. Uh, don't know if we're going to replace him with anybody better. Hope so. Hope so. Um, thank you for being my favorite Welshman. Hey, that's not bad. You know, Christian Bale's a Welshman. Anthony Hopkins is out there. Apparently, I beat them both. Not bad. Um, I haven't watched any of the show, but I always enjoy listening. I always wonder about that, like, what it feels like to listen to you and I talk about this show without having any context for any of it. I feel like, yeah. uh, I think I'm following. <laughs> well, I, it's like when you guys talk about video games. I'm still listening. I have no idea. When you're, like, going to Elden Ring, I'm like, all right. Yeah. Well, I'm still listening. <laughs> I'll so just like tune out guys. for a few minutes. I have yeah. an idea what's going on. Yeah. Um... You had me almost picking this up again after dropping it in season two, but hearing that Steve has to get back with the worst character, yeah, I'll pass. He doesn't, not at least in this season. He doesn't. No, no. There's, um, you know, what would have been proper is him getting with Robin, but they'll never do it because they made her gay. But they um, should totally hook up. They they great together. That, like, by the way, is they will never kill Robin. I don't even think they'll ever hurt to. Like they don't want to. Do you want to get no. anywhere near? Because there's that. It was funny. I was talking to a friend about this. You know, like there's the trope they get criticized for called bury your gays. I remember um, yeah. people get really upset when you kill a gay character. They're like, wow, you always kill the gay character. And I was like, can it? Has it almost become a reverse trope now? Like protect your gays, yeah, where gay characters cannot be hurt because they're gay. I mean, eventually we're gonna we're gonna well, hopefully evolve and start treating everybody as individuals again. Not, <laughs> yeah, treat them as characters. Like, That'd be good. Because uh, guess what? Gay people die every day. Uh, <laughs> so do straight people uh, because uh, we all die. That's that's So in a story, I would assume the same thing could happen. Yeah, but it's just, yeah, because like it was funny. There was a subreddit, uh, Stranger Things, they were doing like a thing where they were trying to like put percentages on chances of characters dying. Steve had one of the highest. Eddie was like guaranteed. Um a couple of other people like had higher ones, but uh, Robin was brought up as a topic, and there was like some people here knew like yeah, yeah, they might kill her, and, and most people were just like no, they won't kill her. She's gay. They're not killing her. They'll never kill her. They, yeah. She's got more plot armor than basically every character, even fucking Eleven, I think. Um, it actually really annoyed me. Um, you remember in season three when they're captured by the Russians? Steve gets the hell beaten out of him. Uh, yeah, they barely touch Robin. In yeah, that. see, that's um. You know what really would have happened? Yeah, uh, and it would have been know. it would have been horrifying. It's the fucking Russians in the eighties, and they think yeah. they think your enemy Soldiers spies who haven't been around women in years, and this is American women, so it's less that like what, what the fuck do you think would happen? Be and terrible. It's such you a know? the whole season's so weird tonally because like they do get like 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 Steve seriously like he's brought to you know his wit's end with like being tortured and beaten and stuff and it's just like yeah what did you expect when you were infiltrating like a secret russian organization dude like i don't really know it's a weird season it's really weird um so yeah i like steve in this season so if you're a steve fan you should be right uh no i thought steve was uh served i mean like even at the end when he saw robin with molly ringwald there he's smiling for her yeah you know that's that's cool he's, he's like a, yeah, dude when he fucking uh when he tore a bat in half steve steve has uh pretty good moments in this season um yeah 
Not to mention Eddie pointing out, I was like, you bit a bat, dude, just like Ozzy. And he's like, huh? He's yep. like, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, so like, I felt like he fell a little bit in the background towards the end, but like he had, he definitely had moments to shine and, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping Steve gets a, a decent, I don't think they'll kill him anymore. They've had a chance no, to kill him no, like no, no, 17 no, times and they just won't no, take it. Gonna... Uh, from a narrative standpoint, I don't understand why Vecna focused on hunting down Max after losing her already. If he needed to kill four people, why focus on one who knows how to fight you off? Completely agree. I have no idea why it only takes four, why Vecna needs to take these particular four, as opposed to... Do you remember when he's searching for victims and there's like a hundred? It's like Cerebro. There's like a hundred different voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, Vecna, if your plan hinges on just killing four people... First of all, lucky as fuck that Team Hawkins were one of those people so that they could twig onto his plan, you know? But, um, secondly, just, yeah, just kill someone else. Unless, of course, he had to kill those particular ones? Yeah, so he needed somebody, people who were just low, low, low self-esteem. That was his way in. Yeah. Like, a, um, and I think they, they did say it in the show that, like, he she was already marked. So it was easier to go back and try again. Like, just mock another one, right? <laughs> go yeah, mock someone yeah. else. I, I mean, know. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I can argue with that. There's a little... It, this, this is what I mean about, like, the more you dig, I think the more it gets a little, like, way... Yeah, an entire what? town, it won't be hard to find somebody with a low self-esteem with some demons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, shit. Uh... Well, dude, he, he he was scanning past someone who was just like, I I I don't like being fat. It's like, oh, if it's that easy, like <laughs> you can be able to grab plenty of people. Um, do, do, yeah. Uh, the Eddie Master of Puppets scene is fire. It is. Yeah, it's fucking. It cool. was amazing. Yeah. It's cool, and, and you know what? I don't care how on the nose it might have been. I just don't care. It was cool. Uh, I can still enjoy things. That's nice. It's rare, but it's nice. They're going in quotes. They, this is music. They even echo yeah. his voice of that part. Uh, yeah. It could relate a lot to that bit. Yeah, dude. Uh, you, that's just a classic. Like, people like pop songs and music. Metal is noise. And it's like, it ain't fucking noise. <laughs> no. No. Metal is better than pop. Period. Fuck End yeah. Um, doesn't Max have to die in hospital for Gates to reopen at the very end? She's the fourth Gates, can't open without four. She did die. So she, as a, I don't want to say soul, because I don't think they've made that a mechanic in this universe. Uh, her, 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 her software is gone. Her consciousness. Yeah, that's that's gone. That's dead. So that's why the gate opens. But her body is being kept alive, like artificially, I guess. But her say. heartbeat did stop, which allowed everything to... Crack yeah, open. that's it. Yeah, uh, and then eleven, eleven rebooted her body, but not the consciousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of this season. The show had a really good jump in quality. I, I yeah, I think it's a significant jump from totally season agree. three. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, season five finale, eleven. I believe in love. Probably she's gonna beat Vecna with love. Probably yeah. Yeah. It's um. It's not even something I'd hate them if they did it. I'd just be like, yeah, I figures. Because you'd do that. All right. Uh, happy fourth, Mauler and Gary. Thank you very much. Happy uh, fourth. High Top made a new video on why there should be a new Superman solo movie, and for once I actually agree with him. As a Superman fan, it does hurt the last movie he was in was the Snyder Cut. Well, I mean, <laughs> hey, you yeah. know, some people like the Snyder Cut, and that's okay. I think my son watched that video because he shot me for this. <laughs> like, my son shoots me random messages all the time, but this is like, why can't they make a good Superman movie? I'm like, I know, son. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm as ready for it as you guys are. It would be nice to have a good Superman movie. Yeah. Before superheroes die out, I'd love to see a proper Superman movie. Uh, Hollywood's incapable. I mean, the answer is they are incapable because they their general belief system um, does not believe in the hero. It's it is weird. Yeah, We're, they've they've really gone away from what I guess I could call intuitively classic storytelling in a lot of ways. A lot of archetypes and tropes they used to... that are they're like tried and tested. They don't seem to want to get anywhere near them anymore. Kind of weird. Yeah, it is. Uh, I still think it's sad how good of chemistry Chrissy and Eddie had. Even the brothers realized they made a mistake. It's finally my year, Henderson. I 
uh, I think that surprised everybody. I was gonna say that was the scene where I, I was almost baffled by the show. I was like, how am I enjoying two people who I've never seen really before, who've not really talked to each other that much before? How am I enjoying this scene so much? Like, yep. the chemistry between them was basically off the charts, which is funny because the main two that I would spot as like having the least chemistry are the two that are, uh, we're supposed to believe in as a couple, being Jonathan and Nancy. Yeah, they have, the, and they're they're actually a couple in real life. <laughs> Which is it's insane. It doesn't make any sense at all. Because Chrissy and Eddie, on the other hand, it's like, I would have loved to have had another scene with those. It would have been great if Eddie could somehow have, like... I, I'm, I appreciate it immensely that they had him say, this is for you, Chrissy. I was like, ah, oh, he, still, he still remembers it. He still cares about it. That's good shit. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, uh, it's kind of sad that Vecna took a bunch of people who really, obviously, were just normal people going through stuff. Like... You know, they don't they don't get to get their justice sort of thing. I think that was another line Eddie had, right? He was like make him pay something like that. In regards yeah. to Vecna. Uh by the way, Mola, back when I was still in chat as Ra, I used to tell you to watch Attack on Titan all the time. Don't. It ended up the worst ending of any media. I checked oh, no. out all media because of it, and that's how bad it was. Recently though I started watching uh things again and found a lot of good stuff. One I strongly recommend for you is Spy Family, pure Kino. Yeah, I heard that's good. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Is yeah, that... Spy Family's good. It's an anime. Is it Netflix or the... somewhere else? I don't know. I'll find out. Hmm. Oh, the chat will tell us. Yeah, Help sorry us to hear about how Attack on Titan ended. Uh, but... One guy says anime sucks. <laughs> I mean, a little bit. <laughs> this, you know, I, hey. I don't love it all. It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Uh, he's in the UK, so I don't know if it'll be on Hulu in the UK. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, imagine by having an awful piece of writing, a total break in time, Eddie played Emerald Sword. I think in all seriousness, I'd climax to death. So Emerald Sword is from Rhapsody, and that's my favorite band. Unfortunately, that song is well past 1986, so we're not going to be able to have yeah. that pop up, but yeah. hey. <laughs> no, it was... Uh, Master Puppets came out in 1986. It was the most listened to album. I'm like... Listen, there's a lot of uh, like Metallica is not what they once were, and those, but this was still Cliff Burton days. So mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to see once. I was telling you that in the chat, like I saw Metallica open for Ozzy with Cliff Burton. It was fucking epic, and uh, they haven't been the same since, since he since he died. Way too young. Rest in peace, Cliff Burton. Uh, Soren Tordon. Soren Tordon, it's got umlauts and everything. Uh, for twenty dollars in total on the donation side, this is a two-parter. Says the Duffers chickened out. They should have killed Dustin and Nancy in the Upside Down, and had Jonathan get shot when they drove off with L. As an added bonus, obviously not going to happen. Vecna could have uh, snapped L's neck, so the writers could transfer some. Uh, agency to Will, who might uh, lap into some supernatural gift and of his own. Since he's connected to the Upside Down, a curveball like that would have set up a bleak finale season with almost insurmountable odds and no deus ex machina to bail them out. That, well, I mean, like, that would have been ballsy writing. I don't know about Dustin. Well, yeah, it's weird because um, part of Eddie's final decision is to prevent Dustin's death. He cuts off the, the line so that yeah. Dustin can't easily get through, and it does save Dustin's life, because if Dustin had followed him straight away, he probably would have died too. Yep. So I, I, I appreciate, and to be honest, dude, I'm, I am holding out all hope that we get at least one scene of Dustin listening to metal next season. It's like, please, please, please carry it oh, on. I think, I think it would be ballsy and, and could be good if L dies at the end. I'm on board with that. I don't think they're going to do it. I just don't think no. the Duffer Brothers would do it. It, it. She reminds me of Aya. I, I think that... Yeah. Uh. Like, because she's dangerous. I mean, there is, like, a legit... Like, she's... When she gets emotional, she can blow up people's brains in their head. Yeah. Like, that's what she did to some of the agents. I don't know if yep. you caught that in season one, but she blows her, their brains up in their head. You hear... Her, so, yeah, I mean, that would be ballsy. I, they will never do that. That will never, ever, ever happen. Uh, Dude, I, uh, 
crazy thing is that it would just never happen, but I, I actually kind of, kind of held out a little hope that they would kill her this season. Well, it, yeah, it, it, like, they used to do this stuff in movies, you know, main characters used to die all the time. Remember when right? Doyle Back died in, in the... Uh, and yeah. Angel? Oh, yeah. like, oh shit, that's supposed to be a main character. It's like, yeah, he was. Yeah. Well, he had some issues behind He did. He was dead in real life, but... It, you know, it... It happens still, narratively speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's just um, if they can't even kill Max, it's like Eleven's never gonna die. No. And to be fair, um, we're talking about all these deaths they didn't do. Fucking Steve, Robin, and Nancy were tied up for like half an hour with things around their necks. Like, I'm sorry, but that was really bad. Like in terms of yeah. translating it to the audience, what you need to do. Is have the vines attacking them and they're like they're dealing with it and they're saving each other but then as soon as we get near to the point where vecna's defeated you have them get tied up and so they have to last like you know half a minute running out of yeah. oxygen you don't have it so that they're tied up and then half an hour later they let go it's like what was vecna doing why would he kill them yeah it's uh it's weird um yeah it was and you know you have to rely on like why didn't vecna kill 11 it's like well because he wants her to watch him win like okay all right lucky <laughs> you know if he had just killed right. her just saying uh wg for 50 dollars. thank you wg what's up man not sure if you picked up on it but pretty sure vecna was drop uh was dropping hints throughout that he was gay in all seriousness Ooh. i wish the season ended on episode seven the last two episodes felt Way flat with too many character arcs. Anyway, happy fourth. Yeah, they weren't paced as well as the first few, and you can tell they were still working on them, and they needed more time, and it got rushed. Dude, the, it's so weird to try and describe it, but episode eight felt almost like an extended trailer for episode nine. Yeah, it's so not necessary. <laughs> like, we could have done not... all of that way faster. Yep. Yep. And to call it Papa, and just like all he did was, I mean, he saved her, but we, we got no insight on where he came from, who he was, like, who's El's dad. Like that's the other thing is, you know, it's just they never think the other parent is a boy. Like there's still well, like a heard, loathing uh, for dads in this. Show. Like that's why it was so surprising that um, Eddie's uncle was shown any kind of respect. Yeah. I was like, wow. Uh. Well, have you heard the theory that they're going to reveal next season that Vecna is Eleven's dad? Oh, you know what? I never thought about that. Um, Could he be? Is he old enough? I think it would be cutting it real close. It's really... How old is that? That actor's good, by the way. Um, yeah, I thought he was really good. But I just thought he was in his 20s. If he's in his uh, 20s, and he ain't too young. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I've heard the theory and I was um, like, that could be something. But then again, yeah, I'm not sure if the timeline works. If he's... Yeah, because how old is she in... How old is she? I know how she is in real life, but how old is she supposed to be in the show? Like 16? She... Oh, dude, you know what? I, I never know the answers to these questions. Because <laughs> it feels like their ages change throughout. Yeah. So if Vecna is like 34, okay. Mm. Sure. He could be like 19 and have a kid. 18. Even pushing 17, you know, you'd say like two of the two of the psychic kids got busy during one of their acid trips. Well, they, you know, they <laughs> just straight you, up it happens. They, so. you know, did did creepy unethical science things, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. Yep. That might be a reveal. That might be a reveal. Maybe. Hey. Uh, WG, happy fourth, my friend. Happy fourth. A Man of War, 665, the neighbor of the beast. Speaking of a good metal band, Man of War. Yeah. Now we're talking. That's some good shit. Uh, most definitely a positive turnaround from the previous two seasons, although not exactly creaming my jeans over the no, uh, not sh shitting the bed with yet another crap season for massively popular hit show however uh i am hq metal and D, D member berries and felt weak sauce as fuck um that's part one by the way mm -hmm. uh this is how 
the critical role set. Uh, this is how the critical role set think old school D and DCO sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, I get your D and D criticisms because yeah, the, they put a lot of modernism on D and D. Okay. Went down and metalheads I grew up with were drug fueled over the top testosterone driven to the point of suicidal and would have died before being seen a coward yours truly i included uh, most of them were they were fucking knuckleheads okay but they weren't dumb i knew some really fucking smart metal heads yeah and like i'll agree engineers. yeah we were always gonna get a hollywoodified version that's what eddie is yeah, but yeah, like yeah we should, I'm serious that this is the best we're going to get. <laughs> Come on. I, what I man of war I think they were trying to like humanize yeah, the metalhead which I'm not against because I hung out I know you were one you bit you're still one dude. <laughs> man of war I met man of war. That dude is metal till the day he passes hopefully that's a thousand years from now. But uh, a good dude, met him in Dallas. Um yeah, I a lot of the guys I knew would be the first to fight, first to throw a punch, not afraid of shit. Um, but then there was, you know, there was other more cautious ones. Um, I was a fucking maniac, but not every punk rocker was like me. You know, I was a maniac. That's um, the thing. There's there's this interesting crossover between nerds and metalheads, and so you can get ones that are like, you know, oh, yeah. pretty well mannered, but at the same time, you know, lock them in a room with. Well, a metal song and they go nuts sort of thing at the time i was like tr transitioning from mm -hmm. uh punk to metal um i spent like the entire time as a punk being called a poser by all the older punks right just that's the way it was you know mm -hmm. punk's dead punk was dead <laughs> the only punk was like between 19 you know the ramones and it was dead by the you know the 80s that's the shit i heard forever and it wasn't uh, but, um, yeah, it, it was, it just reminds me of the good old days when like our music defined us. It was like the thing. That's how we spoke to each other. Uh, that, that was our thing. Uh, even, you know, we had ska, we had punk, we had mods. It was fun. It was good times. We hated each other. We fought <laughs> all the time, you know, uh, but then we the same party selling each other drugs. You know, that those were the days. But yeah, like uh, I knew a lot of metalheads that were that were like Eddie. I knew a ton of them that were like Eddie. Like I said, I think we actually opened with saying this in the stream. Um, the fact is, well, we, well, the metalheads you usually get in media are fucking crazy weirdos and annoying, obnoxious people. Eddie's like everyone's favorite character. It's pretty cool to to get that. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, they worked yeah. hard to make him very endearing, and they gave what him a full arc. Man of War is saying, mm -hmm. um, and and I don't blame him for saying this. Is just outside of Steve, every character feels like well, even Steve a little bit like he's not getting the girl right. They feel uh -huh. like they're being held down, and that that was my big issue with season two and three. I don't think they did it as much this season because I, I yeah, think Eddie uh, was shown like massive respect at the end, which I don't think they would have done three years ago. Yeah, I don't disagree. Uh, Stranger Things is like its own worst enemy. It could be so much better. Yep. Eleven forced healed Max. <laughs> says yep. Com. Uh, what is it? Cornelius Brunels for five dollars. Yeah, she did. She did. And I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, none of the <laughs> watch like, party no. we had. None of us wanted to do that. We're like, no. Yeah, but uh, you know. Like maybe they they blow our socks off in season five and like th like this is all like part and, of the plan. Just waiting for the day where I can finish something good and then not have to say. Hopefully they fix that in the next thing. <laughs> I can just say yeah. no. It was just good. Simple yeah. as that. There is a way to finish a cliffhanger season while still cliffhanger season while still resolving. Yeah, your stuff. Uh, Buffy mostly managed to do it every season. So, you know, um, I hope we get, I, I like, I, I like the overarching story. I'm a big fan of it, but it seems like it's just being used now to pad and, you know, just, uh, waste a bunch of time. 
and we end up like even at the end of this of the final episode and i bitched about it earlier but like mm -hmm. they just walked up slowly to, to see something we all knew we were gonna see like okay i like yeah we're gonna see a bunch of smoke and helicopters in the cracks and they're all gonna be staring at it okay can we get there how about now how about now almost you know? there almost there we go yeah so they really wanted to show us that the upside down is creeping in our dimension okay we got it so how are you going to explain five years because it looked like it was growing pretty big that would be a pretty big spot in five years so does it stop at some point does the government find a way to contain it a little bit guess we'll find out they're probably thinking about that right now yep 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 uh how are you doing on Super Chats, buddy? I can read a few more on this end. Uh, cool. Blood Armor was insane in this. Vecna should easily have won, but he just had a stupid, vengeful villain. Just kill Levin, you're good, dude. Listen, I understand. I really do. But there is some validity to a villain being like, I fucking hate you specifically, and I want to see you to see me kill all of your friends. I think that's valid to some degree, that he would make that choice. However, I will still admit that had he been like, Oh, I fucking hate you, Eleven. I'm gonna kill you. And he did, then like all the main characters would be dead right now. Yeah. So, Plus yeah. she was like not physically there. Yeah, I don't even I guess could he kill her or could he not? I mean, could I maybe kill her in her mind? I guess so. I'm not actually sure if that's how that works, or if she just wakes up and is like, eh. Well, <laughs> Scarlet Witch killed Professor X when <laughs> they were just in fuck. <laughs> Why would you even reference that piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Did you see that video I sent you where uh, Reed Richards is, it says smartest man alive and he doesn't like it's just a scene of Black Bolt <laughs> killing fucking Scarlet Witch. Oh, dude. I, <laughs> That's so good. It was so satisfying to see that. I'm just happy we're well past the time where everybody agrees it's a shit movie now. It only lasted like a month. It wasn't too bad. I know. It seems like um, once the bots go away and the real yeah. people actually see stuff they go, yeah, that wasn't very good. I just love seeing like Norbies be like you know, kind of dumb that she could just beat Professor X that easily. And you're like, yes, yes. Like on his home turf. I mean, yeah, she's when, powerful. But... Well, yeah, he's like, the only psychic. He's a god in there. He is a effing god in there. <laughs> yeah, and she's never done it before. The most she's ever no. done is mostly accidental, like in Westview, in terms of mind control. And then she just beats him straight out. It's like, okay, all right then. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, That's really entertaining and fun. That's stupid. Uh, but um, apparently, yeah, having uh, um, Reed Richards turn into spaghetti was Kevin Feige's idea. I'm like, yeah, great, seems man. like it. Did you see a Michael Waldron's idea of what to do if he had brought in the Wasp? No. Oh, what? He, so he put out a tweet saying, like, originally they were going to bring in the Wasp, and she was going to, you know, shrink down and go to attack Wanda, and then Wanda would clap her hands and just smoosh her. Oh, God. And it's like... Oh, you are seriously the worst writer. <laughs> like, just... Oh, God. Stop. Stop writing things. I Dude, beg you. Yeah, go back to writing instructions on cereal boxes or something, because that's all you're good for. You'll end up killing Maybe children. We don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> like... not. Maybe look for another thing to do. Ugh, yeah. Good God. Yeah. And why is Kevin Feige having ideas? He's a, he's a producer. He's not a creative. Mm. And it shows. Yeah. Um. Justice for Jason Carver, a misunderstood anti-hero who is trying to protect his town from a supernatural threat. He is the tragic character, says Bert for five dollars. I agree. That is one of the, the things I have an issue with. That's the problem. The, the show has no idea what they did when they portrayed that character. He's he's such a normal guy. Uh, and he's just trying to save someone's life at the end there. But everyone has come away from it thinking he was a horrible villain who deserved worse. It's like, oh. No, and like they both he and Eddie both like the same girl. Yeah. You could have had the best resolution of those guys coming together to avenge the girl. Yep. You know, that's that's that would have been great. Like, it's such an easy fucking payoff to have Eddie save Jason's life. That's such an obvious payoff. But he was just there to be Jock who dies. Yeah. Because jocks suck. And they need to die. It's like, <laughs> be better than that, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what they did in season one with Steve. Steve was supposed to be like, oh, look, he's a jock. No one likes him. But he yep. comes around. Remember, it's a great moment in season one where you think he's going to run away scared from the Demogorgon, but he ends up saving uh, Jonathan and Nancy from it. Yeah, that was awesome. That was a fucking awesome scene. That's why mm -hmm. people like Steve. 
Yep. Because he was a dick and he's not a dick anymore, or he's mm -hmm. at least portrayed that way. Now, um, I still say, you know, kill J Jason, kill Jason, but like have him get, like, give him a little redemption before he dies, man. That's at the very least, let him know that he was wrong. Come on, let him understand the situation to some degree. Yeah. Instead of just like taking, I don't know, enjoyment out of the fact that he he was never fully explained the situation. You know, it's just, it's just weird to me. I don't know. It's uh, yeah. it's incomplete the story for him. I don't think they'll overcorrect for him though. They don't care about him. Nobody's gonna mention no. him in next season. Nope. All right. Nope. He'll disappear because <laughs> he was designed to die and be annoying and get in the way. That's all it was. Yeah, and and that which makes his entire arc a waste of time. Mm -hmm. utter waste of time that he should he've got way too much screen time for somebody who just dies at the end um i mean you got that whole fucking speech at the town like eh, yeah yeah uh yeah. Um, well, go for it uh, attack on titan's ending isn't that bad it was like if after seasons one of through four of game of thrones it ended in the quality of stranger things season two to be fair i really hate season two of stranger things so <laughs> like, yeah you know, hey, to each their own. Uh, but yeah, no Attack on Titans ending is a monument to bad writing and a masterclass in ruined setups. No book, show, game, film, anime has a worse ending. Really, I mean, wow. I still think Game of Thrones season eight is hard to beat. Just saying, uh, hard to beat. That's all. I know I said I mellowed out, but if people here start defending Attack on Titan, I'll actually go back to being exactly how I always was. Oh no. He, he throws people off rooftops in his super chats often. <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> uh, I skipped all of the Russian plot. Should I go back and watch? I concentrate well, on the kids' stories. Or, or oh, uh, in season four? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. That's what they're saying. Oh, I, I, yeah, I would definitely go back and watch it. I think that Hopper's plotline is better than the Lenora plotline. So if you enjoyed the Lenora one, then yeah, give yeah. it a shot. Yeah. You learn more about Hopper in a very serious way that I think actually way better and um you get to meet the, the god character there's some chemistry there and you get the i feel like i might be spoiling it now but you know the big fight with the demogorgon which i thought was pretty okay you know it's was pretty, it was pretty yeah fun. and uh, you also find out that you can capture the mind flayer apparently yeah. Put yeah, in a little, apparently. little tube <laughs> little tube where they they must have had a vacuum cleaner or something i don't know nah, yeah that makes the most sense uh I saw a little bit. Vecna being Eleven's dad sounds like a troll. Like, there's no way that's not a troll. The timeline and character placement just doesn't allow for it. I think it might allow for it timeline-wise, because he was um, a kid in, like, 19... Was it 1959 or something like that? Yeah. So add 10 years, and then all you need to do... This is the dodgy part, is you have to have that sect of government do some really creepy and weird shit. Uh... And then you could make that twist. So this is the thing. I read it and I was like, uh, maybe they could do an I am your father payoff, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, th I think, I think oh, it would make I, I fans would. uncomfortable. You know, I'm not sure how much narrative juice you can draw out of that compared to the, the gross feeling people are going to get. Um, a little, little emoji of some hippos. <laughs> and um most people love steve uh what do you guys think well yeah i really like steve um i like steve he's a guy who every time every season is dragged into this mess and he usually ends up defending people or looking after the kids because he knows that he's got to it's like his responsibility if he's the only adult in the area i i really respect someone for that and he usually comes through. He always has to do the brave thing. Um, I like that they kept that up in this season. Like when they're all in the boat and they realize someone's got to go in the water and he just stands up immediately and starts getting ready. And he's like, I'm, I was, uh, you know, body, a swimming god. Uh, fucking, why am I forgetting the name for it? The person who looks after people who might be drowning. Lifeguard. Lifeguard, yeah. Um, he was, he's like, I, I was that for three years. I was uh, on the swim team or whatever. Like nobody here will be better for this than me. I'll do it. Like, yep. And look at him go. Good guy. Good uh, guy. Yeah, I am caught up for now, so. Okay. Uh, Heike Heinonen, sorry, for two euros. 
Uh, Will should be bigger, have bigger power than just a neck itch. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think they should, they should have been slowly bringing on like, cause he had visions in season two. So like, and it felt like he was having one at the end of season four, but everybody was seeing it. So, mm. uh, Mikey Gussler for $10. Hi, Mikey. What's up, buddy? Uh, Hey guy. Hey Gary, you talked about doing a Midwest meetup. This is August, uh, 12th. I'm going to Def Leppard, Motley Crue, oh, Poison. Oh, and Joan Jett. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, concert in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Want to come hang out in Pittsburgh? Uh, August, I can't August 12th. I wish I could. I can't though, because that's real close to Vegas. I got to prep for Vegas. But thank you for the invite, dude. That would be an awesome fucking show. Is it, is it Vince Neal with Motley Crue? I do not. I, 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 I know they hate him. So they keep getting back together. So I, yeah, it's, I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, I, I like crew. I like crew. All right. Shout the devil's fun album. Uh, David G for two ten. Uh, but enjoy the hell out of that show, Mikey. And thank you for the invite. Really, truly appreciate it. Maybe next time, man. Uh, David G for 10 Australian dollars. Keep up the good work, fellas. Uh, you help keep us sane in an increasingly insane world love from the prison col colony down under yeah good luck down there i saw one of your uh, politicians try to equate climate change with um uh people being abused because of their gender which uh, that would seem like a bit of a stretch to me i'm just saying <laughs> um but uh yeah that was the most insane thing i heard yesterday i shared it in the real bbc chat uh Mahler, watch cobra kai says Rob Duran for $1.99. That's fair. That's one of those ones. That's on Netflix, right? Is it? Or That is on Netflix. Yeah. Ah, well, perhaps I will. It's, it's, it is, um, quite good. Good character work. Johnny Lawrence is fucking awesome. Uh, a bit silly at times, a little kind of like stranger things. Some things you go, but the characters are so good that you don't kind of don't give a shit. Um, the last season was better, uh, like first season's magic. It's kind of like, uh, it's better than stranger things. Like the, mm -hmm. uh, all the seasons are enjoyable. <laughs> That's the first nice. season, really good. Really, really good. How did the Russian camp get Conan's sword as uh, Matthew Madsen for a dollar 99? Well, maybe they went to a collectible, collectible store, but they had those, that, that armory for the Demogorgon. So maybe mm. they had a sword laying around. Yeah. And it was supposed to look like conan's and i'm yeah. fine with that i got no problem uh should matthew vaughn make a superman film separate of this uh zach snyder says xls for two dollars well i wouldn't throw away any of zach snyder stuff i would just like make a superman film that you don't you can have the same people right just have matthew vaughn do it <laughs> that's all and you don't need to reference to anything you know, you could say, like, yeah, was some crazy shit that went down in Metropolis, you know, a few years ago. Maybe that, but no, I, I wouldn't, I would not do, no, you've, did, no, that just confuses shit. Just go, just make a Superman movie. Did you know that DC is going to get more and more confusing the more they release, probably? Mm hmm. They're going to have to, they don't know what they're doing. They're going to retcon and move things around until eventually they're like, we start naming timelines and they're like, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Warner Brothers should be killing Disney. Uh, yeah, Disney's got Marvel. Disney's got Star Wars, but we've seen what they've done with them. And arguably, you know, remember when they had Harry Potter and Batman going at the same time? That was pretty successful. Mm. That was pretty successful, which which made Disney go out and buy, you know, Star Wars and, and Marvel because they were getting their ass beat so bad. And then Disney proved that they deserve to get their ass beat because they suck. <laughs> uh, thoughts on severance and everything everywhere all at once. I haven't seen the latter and uh, severance. I haven't seen either. I need to watch severance. People keep recommending it, but um, everything all everywhere all at once. I thought it was great. Loved it. Thought it was awesome. I recommend it. Yeah. I'm that I'm definitely going to watch in the future. And 
I wasn't a fan of metal until a few years ago when I found a fun metal bands like Windrose, Stormseeker, and uh, Manowar. Or no, sorry, Nanowar of Steel. I thought you were talking. Uh, it says Thomas Wright for five dollars. Hey, however you get there, you mm -hmm. get there. That's, That's funny. Fine. I had like the most normal introduction to metal ever. I was like, here is Megadeth, Iron Maiden, Metallica. Just listen to them. And I was like, this is really neat. And then I started to listen to like more obscure, branching off uh, subgenres. You know? Yeah. Um, I got into it because like the minute, well, I just liked really aggressive freaking energetic music mm -hmm. i just do so yeah but i mean like i was in a kiss when i was like a little kid uh like a little little kid like seven years old i was like singing love gun had no idea what the fuck i was singing um <laughs> so yeah that that's what got me that's that's where the metal got me was kiss and then you know, the 80s happened and thrash metal and fucking Megadeth and Slayer and Sepultura. And, you know, it's off to the races after that. Um, do, 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 do. Gary, did they do their taxes on the new episode of Westworld? <laughs> Says Tim Dog 68 for five dollars. Practically, God. <laughs> oh, it's so predictable. It's so fucking, so they're trying to do, um, oh, like I'm blanking on it now. Future World. That's right. That was the sequel to Westworld, right? Uh, I love I the movie remember. Westworld. Future World was this, I'm pretty sure Future World was it. I, I could be getting it wrong. But the, what, what, uh, what happened in that movie was they replaced all the politicians and rich people with robots. Uh, except it's robots replacing all the politicians and rich people with robots, but you're keeping one alive to like tap in so they can still get the memories and make it, uh, give it that um, fidelity that they were looking at for in season two when uh, Delos, the owner of the park, uh, was dying and he wanted to transfer his consciousness into a robot. And that was the whole point, right? The whole point mm -hmm. was immortality. And it's supposed to be like a, a big... What I thought Westworld would be would be like, uh, you know, a little bit of criticism of big tech and their data collection, but more consciousness. What is what is conscious? Let's let's study that. Let's study all aspects of it and have a little fun. Um, I love the fact that they jumped around time a little bit, but um, they came out and said they had a plan after season one. That was, they were full of shit. And they actually had to come out and, and, and admit they didn't later. I mean, didn't uh, they famously, like, change things based on what they saw people were guessing or whatever? Yes. Yeah, no, Jonathan Nolan did, like, the dumbest thing possible. Somebody guessed something on Reddit, so they changed a complete plot God. aspect. One of the stupidest fucked. decisions you can make as a writer, just because some Ever. of the, a fan guesses where you're going with it, that's not a bad thing. That's okay. No. I mean, credit to George R. R. Martin, who said he would never do that, and he said, there's people on Reddit who have guessed what I'm going to do. Not mm -hmm. going to change it. Yeah. But, well, We'll never know because he's not going to fucking finish it. But um, yeah, no, like people are going to guess shit. There's smart people out there who like that's really good, by the way. Like somebody so into your stuff that they guessed something. Just go good on you, mate. Or less, whatever, you know. Well done. Thanks for being into our stuff so much that you guessed it. We're still going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's called being confident in your work, man. Like stay off fucking Reddit. Yeah. Like Reddit <laughs> sucks anyway. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, Minor Zircon for two dollars says, Happy Fourth of July, Gary, my fellow Texan. Hail, God bless Texas and America. Uh, hey, I, I'm enjoying my first Fourth of July in America in a mm -hmm. long time. In a long, long time. The only thing California did that was great in the last two years was when Gavin Newsom came out and said, No fireworks, and everybody fucking let off their fireworks. It was fucking <laughs> awful. <laughs> Yeah, I I could have told him that as a like a an aid to it, but I just feel like if you tell them not to do it, there will be more. <laughs> there will be a record amount. Yes. Um, John Witchboy for ten dollars says I haven't seen uh Stranger Things season 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 four. I can speak, but do you get the feeling that they will be introducing more D and D lore beyond the Demogorgon, uh, Vecna and the Mind Flayer? Um. Uh, I doubt it. Um, they've only ever really like played with the D and D stuff. 
very thinly and vaguely. In fact, do you remember the scene, I think it's in season two, where they're talking about the Mind Flare and Hopper is like, what is this, like a game? And they're like, yes, yeah, D&D. And then he's like, oh, what the fuck? Like, why are you guys... Doing this? And then Dustin explains, like, oh, it's like a, an analogy to help us understand, or a metaphor, or whatever, to, to, to help us uh, understand the, the creature itself. And then Hopper's like, well, how do you beat it? And then Dustin says, well, you, you need zombies, things without brains, because the Mind Flayer likes brains. And then Hopper looks at him like he's an idiot. And I remember thinking to myself, like, you just asked him how you defeat the creature from the game mechanically and it's like i basically D, D has already ever been just like a, a little way for the kids to kind of rationalize the drama of what's happening you know because no demogorgon mind flayer vecna none of those things are actually accurate names for what we're getting it's just a really cool way of like how would the kids name them but at the same time it would be nice maybe if they could in incorporate D, D a bit more but um in the same way that Eddie is like a more Hollywoodified version of like a metalhead, I think that's their approach with D&D as well. It's like they're never going to get into the actual like weeds of how D&D actually goes. Um, I don't know about you, Gary. But like, I, not how they're going to defeat the Mind Flayer with Max. She's mindless. She's I, like I, they might. Um, they might. Because that's, that's the way I would do it. I would want to try and find out how the mechanics work in D&D and then see if they can, we can inspire some story beats with that. I'm not very good on my D and D names, but he mentions more. He's like, "Will they? Will they bring in Strahd, Orcus, Asmodeus, and maybe a succubus?" Oh, mm. I'm down with the succubus. Let's do it. Let's do it. I fuck. I hell yeah. I wish they would just go all balls out. Like that would be fun. That would be fun. Like straight up balls out. Bring in some more boss bad guys. Uh, I yeah, think man. If we could have redone the whole show, I would probably have done that. Make a whole, like, you know, set of ranks and different creatures and life in the Upside Down from the get-go. Because it seemed to me that back in the day, they were like, we have, in season one, they were like, we have the Upside Down, spooky place. You're like, okay, yep. what else do you have? Yep. It's like, Demogorgon, it's kind of this spooky monster. You're like, all right, what else you got? And it's like, um, uh, like creepy tentacle things sometimes here and there. Oh. Yeah. What what else? And they're like, that, that's about it for now. Dogs, <laughs> like, we got dem demo dogs. Uh, oh yeah, that that was inspired, wasn't it? Right. Oh, nice. No, it's like I, the I, yeah, you, dog. Keep, you keep like a any game. You keep leveling up your bosses, man. You get new bosses that you got to fight until you get to the big boss. Mm -hmm. You know, who can be Satan or wh whoever you want it to uh, be. Yeah, why not? Bring in Satan. <laughs> Bring in Satan. Fuck it. I mean, if you want to lean into the horror stuff from the 80s, that, that's a lot of that stuff. You know, Go John Carpenter if you want. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So I think season five, spoiler ending, 11 killed by Vecna, but Will and Mike retaliate by kissing and pride <laughs> ring all the from their embrace, destroying Vecna as John Kennedy for $5. <laughs> Vector is blasted by the rainbow flag and he uh yes he's defeated by, by... <laughs> oh god oh if it was run by disney well if it was run by netflix but this might be a new netflix we don't know uh netflix really needs stranger things to work so they can spin off and yeah. do it do more they, which they're talking about Dude, season four gave them hope probably because uh after season three, its its cultural footprint was faded. Like, yep. Stranger well, Things, like, honestly, oh yeah, I remember that, I think. And it wasn't enough to help keep them from losing a bunch of subs. I mean, like, let's but look back at their, like, Witcher. Witcher fucking failed massively. Like, nobody was talking about Witcher season two. Yeah. I, I got reminded yesterday that there's going to be a season three. They're filming it now, and it's like, oh, oh great. Henry Cow will be guest starring in The Witcher again. That's awesome. <laughs> we... Uh, off topic, but please check out Star Warped of a 2002 claymation parody of Star Wars and Star Trek. It's just full of memes. Watch the trailer, if nothing. Uh, I will. Eraser279, thank you. Uh, salute to the Scott Irish over mountain. Salute to the Scott Irish over mountain backwoodsman of the Carolina's Battle King Mountain leading 
to Yorktown. Well, shout out. I can. All right. Sorry, I was having a hard time reading that. That was my bad. And shout out to you, Orbital Hub, for $5. Thank you. And Rob Duran, thank you for the $1.99. All right. That's, I got the super chats there. And I got a few more I could. Um, go for it. Go for it. Be here. Uh, for a fantasy series to get into, I highly recommend One Piece. It's a second highest selling comic ever. Yeah. Uh, with writing on par with Lord of the Rings and Dune. Ah. Damn. That is some uh, high praise. That is some pretty high praise right there. I have heard of One Piece, but I mean, it's probably the most intimidating thing to ever start reading because it's like a billion years long already, right? One of the hugest stories going. Um, yeah, I hear it. I, I hear a lot of uh, praise for it. Steve getting shat on in season two was what made me check out. I still remember. Always felt like Jonathan was a self-insert for the Duffers and Steve an effigy slash avatar of some Chad that cucked them in school. Um, yeah, it definitely feels like they don't... They got picked on in school. I think I think I agree with it. And um, yeah, I, I half agree with Steve in season two because the first few episodes, he starts getting screwed over by Nancy being just a bad person to him. He's trying, but she just, like, she unironically just tells him, like, our relationship is shit and he's like okay um but then you you find that he he tries to apologize to her when he really shouldn't um but he bumps into dustin and then they start their uh their friendship and i way prefer any scene he spends with dustin than any scene he spends with nancy so season two is the reason that starts up so you know half and half i i agree yeah. that they screwed him over in season two but then they also start up the parts of Steve that I actually enjoy, because he ends up, you know, defending all the kids, looking after him and stuff. Um, I think, yeah, season two is the season where he said that they're all suggesting to go outside, and he's like, no, I was told to look after you little shits, and you're gonna stay here. Um, yep. So then he has to try and help him out, because fucking, what's his name, uh, Billy comes in. He, Billy was a stereotype character for ages as well, like one-dimensional. I am angry. It's like, <laughs> alright, be angry, I guess. All right. Um, Max will get powers next season taken from Vecna. Oof. No, oh boy, no. If they not only resurrect her, but give her powers as well. Ooh. No. <laughs> I don't really hate that. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, no, don't read One Piece. It's fallen off bad, lol. Oh, my. <laughs> I always get that. Check out this one thing. That thing sucks. <laughs> Oh, good. I love you guys. <laughs> uh, by the way, I went to see everything everywhere all at once because of your tweets about it. Went in thinking I'd hate it because of Reddit lib stuff, but loved it. Watched it four times in theaters. Hey, there you go. Glad you did. It's like a visual fun film. Oh, yeah. There's, uh, there's something for everybody in that as far as I'm the concerned. The fact that it resurrected Short Round's career. Yeah. Dude, he's that's, great in that that's, movie. That's just a fucking cool story, you know. Kind of like what Cobra Kai, the cool, one of the coolest things about Cobra Kai is the story behind it, you know? Like Ralph Macchio, you know, he had a good career as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, it resurrected their careers and, you know, made them big stars again, and they're, like, super humble about it. It's like, that's the kind of shit you like to see, you know? Um, yeah, you know? I, I like success. I think success is fun. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Do you think they made it too easy to guess who Vecna really was? Uh, I think it's fine that you can guess it, because yeah. um, it's pretty obvious as soon as you see how the people have died in uh, the Eleven room. If you pay attention to the fact that all of them have their eyes gouged out, like, wait a second, I've seen that before. It's like, yeah. yeah. Um, the only criticism I have isn't even that you can connect it early on. It's how the Duffer brothers seriously don't expect you to pick things up. To the point where they have the camera zoom in on Vecna's arm to show zero zero one. I was like, "Oh, dude, oh, I dude. know." Okay, I picked I it up by it. now. <laughs> Give me I'm some credit. I'm following you. It's all right. We don't need to do that. Yeah, that's how it feels with some stuff. Where it's, it's like the writer's sitting next to you, and he's like, "Isn't it crazy that he's Vecna?" And you're like, "Yeah, that's no, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm Vecna." <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I, I remember watching it with Jay and he just started laughing when they showed the 001. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's silly, but 
Yeah. I thought it was going to say number two. <laughs> oh, what a big <laughs> twist. <laughs> um, uh, still sad you haven't seen Mob Psycho 100, made by the same person who did One Punch Man. Genuinely great and even excels at points compared to uh, One Punch Man. I got to finish Parasite. I've been, I've, I've been told Mob Psycho 100 is good as well. Yeah. Hard oh, to keep God. track of all of these animus, okay? I don't yeah. Know what's going on. I don't know how, <laughs> like, we can't manage to animate Jack shit in america that doesn't look like cal arts garbage and that little country over there yeah they're doing stuff they crank out some pretty good stuff like animation wise i don't like the uh super cartoony anime but i like the the more realized version mm -hmm. right no yeah so i'm yeah, not gonna be watching sailor moon anytime soon but um yeah like parasite was it's really good it's really good as much as I love One pa One Piece does certainly have hiccups, so not Tolkien level, but for a series going over 30 years, it handles continuity and storylines better than most. Uh, 30 years, I guess, what can we compare that to? Doctor Who, maybe? Yeah, And yeah. that's going great. Oh, so great. So great. So great. Um, uh, did, did you see Black Phone yet? Thought it was original and very enjoyable. Ethan Hawke is creepy as fuck as the serial killer. I have not. I heard it's good. And that's uh, uh, by uh, Scott Derrickson, the guy who was supposed to direct Doc Strange. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because I've heard from one other friend that that was a good film as well. So yep. maybe I'll check it out. Um, but yeah, I'm caught up for now. If you want to carry on, your end. Um, uh, Peter Davidson for 20 Australian dollars says, did you get my emails on Tolkien, please? Not yet, but I will get to my email tonight when I go through it. I have to respond to a lot of people. Um, and thank you, Peter. Thank you for the 20 Australian dollars and say hello to mum for me. Uh, dun, 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 dun. and thanks for the cricket bat. Mm. I now have a weapon. If anybody comes to my house, they're going to cricket back over the fucking head. Cause that's the only thing I, I, I don't play cricket. I'm, I could take it to the batting cages and use it as a baseball bat, but that wouldn't be fair. It's a little too big. It's a little too big. Uh, Kelly Johnson for two dollars says, "GM, who will Jon Snow's new love interest be? Um, uh, a guy named Bill. <laughs> Bill Snow. East. Bill, Bill, yeah, Bill Sleet from Esos. No, I don't know. Um, yeah, Jon, I do. I can do an entire live stream on what I think they're going to do. But we talked about it a little bit." It's going to be uh, um, him traveling the lands that we haven't seen. Fish out of water kind of thing. Sorry, I was distracted. You're going to find this funny. Apparently David Harbour rang Ryan Reynolds the day Hellboy released. And he said, hey man, I just need to know something. You know Green Lantern? Huge flop for you. What the fuck is that like? Because I'm about to hit that right now. Oh, <laughs> uh. well, why'd you need a phone call? You just sat there and feel it. <laughs> yep. You know? Oof. It was like, what was Ryan going to say? It's like, well, wait about five minutes. You're going to know. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, David Harbour. Good actor. I like him as Hopper. Mm -hmm. I do. Usually plays a bad guy. Um, he's a screaming elitist socialist dipshit who I really don't need to hear ever outside of anything. Just stick to acting, buddy. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's just, especially what, what his award acceptance, he looked like he was not like coked up. Maybe he's sober now. Oh, well, hey, know. we got that great Winona Ryder reaction shot in that. Right? Is that the same one? Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when she's, she's like, she has no idea what's happening. <laughs> right. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I'm caught, I'm mostly caught up. Mm. Uh, wait, oh. Yeah. So, I think we can wrap things up. Oh my. Oh my. Um. I got just two more. Haven't watched it yet, but it seems that the Duffer Brothers may have been surrounded by idiots to have to spell out plot points to their contemporaries. 
Yeah, um, it's it's one of the lowest tier problems I have with media. It's like, I can get over it, but man, I wish you wouldn't treat me like a baby sometimes. Like, I get it. I got yeah. it. Okay? Like, you know Kenobi? I just laugh my head off when they tell us like a million different oh, ways no. that... When, what what Reva's arc is. That's, is like, I almost expect it. But when it's in Stranger Things, I'm like, oh, guys, come on. You're better than this. Wow. You don't need to do that. Um, I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but I thought Owens and Brenna reflected the two sides of fatherhood nicely. Owens was protective and caring. Brenna was strict and disciplined. They were fantastic. I liked them together. I felt like... Yeah, um, I did too. Like the two dads? Yeah, it, it felt like they had a good balance. Um approaches they, and stuff they did they did and and it gave um paul riser owens his character uh, a a little more to do and it gave made him a little more like he's still nice guy but like he dude mm -hmm. he knew what he was taking 11 into and he felt fucked up about it yeah i thought yeah, that was really good how they did that and i can understand it if they all believe the world is at stake and she's the only one that can save it you know i i, I get it i get it um so but how is know, the world at stake? I, I don't. Mean, like, I don't know. <laughs> that's the thing. I still don't know. Back I mean, going to destroy the world. It. They know it somehow. I'm not sure. I mean, these kids have fought off everything from the upside down so far. Okay, so you got to convince me. I, they the, at the end, I was expecting like a post credit. Like they they gave you a little vision through Nancy. I guess they they felt like that was enough. I don't. Mm. No, I, I, don't I get you. Yeah, I. I I agree. They they needed to be more of how they understood the situation exactly. Yeah. Um, will Jon Snow validate every female in spit off? He needs a new queen to worship, doesn't he? He does. Oh, the other one. Oh God, I can't get it. It is the craziest idea ever to do that. To do that, because like all, see, when you do something like that, then people will be going, "Where's Arya? Where's Sansa? Where's Tyrion?" And then they're going to bring him in, and then it's going to be Game of Thrones season nine. Yep. And then they'll, I dude, your idea of a Night Queen, oh, that's so possible. I'm not even. Oh, oh. I think it's totally going to happen, and I think um, they can connect it to the five forts, which were uh, they're in Essos, and they're made of black fused stone. Uh, of the of like the elder races which is supposed to it's it's just uh when um george r. r martin was building out his word world there's a bunch of cthulhu shit and there's a bunch of hp lovecraft stuff in it right so um it's yeah so those were built the these giant forts that they couldn't build now it's also a callback to elric right so you have some previous civilization that's been completely lost build this super advanced thing that they can still work but they don't know how to make it and right. it was built to fight off the White Walkers from before on that side of the planet. So they had to deal with them, too. Um, and that's what the, that's what it's probably going to be. It's going to be him going to to fight the White Walkers and there will be a Night Queen, which. And, and, and they'll do what Disney have started doing, where they'll be like, we've got to get Jon Snow to say, I know nothing. We've got to get Aya to do some badass things. Got to get point, point to uh, stab him with the pointy end so they can say things. Yeah, say the catchphrases, turn up the catchphrases, team up, violate the hound will come back. He'll survive. He'll just be all burned instead of burned on half his face. Mm. And uh, yeah. And you'll say it was Sith magic cloning. That's what that's how he got. He's alive. Yeah, that's how they do it. <laughs> Why the fuck not? I got a few more here. Uh, cd stein 69 for 9.99 uh really feel they're going to jump the silent hill mode for season five they'll try to make a uh, parallels to the town in pennsylvania that had the coal mines that still burn today oh there's a couple places on earth that's like that too there's a there's a gas pit in russia and it was in russia no it's not russia it's somewhere in europe mm -hmm. where it blew up no it was right i think it was russia where they tried to like, there was a mine that they thought it would be a good idea to just blow it up to close the hole or something like that, and it just cut on fire and it's still on fire. Yeah, and there's that there's that coal fire in uh, Pennsylvania that's been going on since the seventies. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, R.I.P. Tim Sale. His art will always be a strong voice. Says uneven streets for a dollar ninety nine. Yeah, 
Yeah, died um, of liver cancer or failure. One of the two. Uh, Demons, man. He wasn't that old. Great artist. Did uh, Long Halloween. Uh, RRTNZ, $5, says, keep it up on the super sticker. Thank you very much. Uh, CD Stein, 69 for four ninety nine says, if you're going to level up with D&D bosses, then they already gave a hint to Tiamat with Will's painting. Oh, okay. Oh, the three-headed dragon thing? Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Just don't fight. Don't fight a fucking cloudy dust monster. Just no. don't. No. No. Franco Carlo Simo. Carlo Simo. Says, have any of you read Berserk? Yes. I have read the first volume. It's fucking awesome. I started a few weeks ago and I just can't stop. Medieval fantasy manga with a lot of good characters, gore and demons. Yeah, it's freaking dope but it's good that's gonna get finished uh it's good that it's gonna get finished all right i'm wrapped up buddy um over here i just got uh what the fuck why does george r martin love doctor strange 2 i (laughs) (laughs) he did i'm not surprised (laughs) to be honest with i was gonna say well he should speak well of you know different companies right now because he's in the biz right but then i was like you know what he probably did like it fuck it whatever probably thought it was great why not uh, um, Gary, what he about didn't. what about Val? What about Val Kilmer, though? What about Val? Yeah, um, oh. I'm not sure. The same person was asking about the will Jon Snow validate every female in spinoff. I don't know if it's got something to do with that. Or are they talking about Val Kilmer in Top Gun, maybe? Or I don't know. Val, 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 Val from A Song of Ice and Fire. Oh. Oh, Val, Val, Val. Yes. Okay, that's a character they didn't put in. Okay, it right. took me a second to get there. Um, it's the girl that he's a, it's it's a it's a wildling that he's attracted to. That could be a woods witch. She's got some werewood stuff. She's like super fucking hot. Um, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, th- yeah, they would bring her. I think that I think you're right. They would bring her in. Might be. Mm, yeah. Eighth level characters struggle to kill a mind flare. Kids wouldn't be able to do it. Hey man, TV show. We'll just write it so that Max has powers. Why not? They need to like uh, bring in some archaeologist or something that finds some scroll that says there's another dimension with a Tiamat or whatever. They, that's what they need. They need to like add some lore without just D and D. Like they I also need think. Some- they just missed their shot of really having an Empire Strikes Back of beating down the team fight for once because they always escape. It'd be like you should have killed Eddie, Max, and maybe someone else too. Yeah, all I at think, once, um, and Vecna shouldn't even have been harmed. Be he should have just been this fine. Was... Yeah, this was as close as we're gonna get. Yeah, they yeah. tried. They, they they couldn't quite commit though. But um, yeah, it should have, it should have been a real strong low point for the series for the characters, and then this five. is why you need. This is why your writers need to be a little bit of a fucking asshole, right? Like I understand it creatively, maybe not to other people, but creatively, like nope, my vision is king. I've got this idea, and fuck producer notes and everything else, and you know the like. I'm okay, like. You don't want to destroy Luke Skywalker. See, that's dumb. It's always one extreme or the other. And we can't just have a little balance. Like, I think people expected Luke to die at the end of the Disney trail. I, I don't think he even needed to do, to do that. But you need, need to, like, slowly chop his balls off. <laughs> <laughs> and then have him die. And then be dumb. Uh, it's, it's, it's one extreme or the other because there's just so much freaking hate for what came before i seen someone said like max is han and carbonite is she not like being in suspense in, in the coma stuff and i'm like so the comparison you should be making is the the realistic consequences of vader testing out a system to travel a person to the emperor via like a, in a cargo form is to test out the carbonite system he doesn't know if it would kill a person, so he tested on Han, 
and we get the realistic consequence of him being locked in carbonate and sent to the person who wants to pay for his bounty. Like, that happens. That's something that happens. Mm -hmm. The equivalent in Stranger Things is her legs and arms are broken and her mind is fucked with and she's bleeding out of her eye sockets. Like, she has to die. She dies from that. I can't even imagine the internal bleeding she's got going on. Yeah. Like, that's the realistic consequence. You can't it's not... compare Max to Han Solo either. And no. let's be real, Han Solo never came back in Return of the Jedi, okay? He's a, he's a bit Ford different. He nailed in that fucking performance. He never sat his ass in the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. These are big. I, I've, had the, I've had these complaints since I was 14, since I watched the movie. Okay. I like the movie. I do. I think it's half great. But Han Solo, fucking not great in that movie. Hmm. Um. Molly, you should watch the boys. The new season has badass stuff. It's fun to watch, but also writing so terrible you'll get a great EFAP out of it. Unlike season two, which was just torture. Have you heard anything uh, one way or the other about the boys season three so far? Not well, a, a bunch of people are liking it. And then every time I bring it up, my chat goes, woke shit. Terrible. Fucking awful. So I keep, I'm I keep watch hearing it, all of I'll the probably, things. It's bad, I'll it's good, it's bad, it's good, it's bad, it's good. It's like, oh, if you, I mean, if I had a gun in my head right now, I'd probably think it's it's woke. Yeah, you damn right, Vertical Horizons. I just love the Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Everyone's no, favorite. Do not like the Ewoks. Um, I'll probably end up not liking it. I'd be surprised if I ended up liking it if several people are telling me it's middle to okay to bad to good. It's like, oh, if it's at that point. Stranger Things got like high recommendations and I consider it like pretty flawed um so I imagine that the boys gonna be something that pisses me off again I, I I'm not gonna like be shocked at all if they fumble it by the time they end up because the, the last few episodes are coming out soon right or yep yeah uh I'll be hey chat it'll be on you to tell me what I missed okay once it finishes let me know how this story concludes I guess because um, assuming they're not going to end it with three seasons before we keep going. Oh, yeah. It got renewed for season four. Yeah. It, it already got renewed, so it's going to be going. Uh, it's weird. I, 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 like, it has to be their most popular series, but I heard Reacher was, like, their most watched series of all. Of all of them. It'll it's be crazy. fine, dude. Rings of Power will bring in all the subscribers and the money. Okay. <sighs> It's gonna be great. Can't wait. <laughs> True fans will support that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm caught up on my end. All right, and I, I am, and I've got to jet because I need to eat. And uh, thank you for chatting with me, dude. And uh, thank you for joining us out there in the audience. You guys are fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank for listening to us. Ramble on about a TV show that was kind of neat. That was kind of neat and good. Yeah. Um, and I can watch Drinker's video. It's so funny. My son, I get this uh, message from my son. Like I said, he ran, gives me the most random shit. He's all, Drinker's comments are turned off. And I'm like, oh, you're watching Drinker's videos, but you're not watching mine. <laughs> he's like, I talk to you every day. And I'm like, okay, it's <laughs> a good point. It's a good point. No, he's a big fan. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I guess the comments were turned off. He said YouTube did it. Oh. YouTube, YouTube was acting funny all weekend. It's like they, they took the weekend off or something. I don't know, because of 4th of July. Oh, maybe. My ad check took an hour and a half yesterday. Yeah, it was crazy. But happy Independence Day. Yeah. To everyone uh, uh, across the world. Freedom, you know, freedom applies freedom. to you guys, too. Freedom. Absolutely, it yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a strange way to spend the day, I guess, for us. But you know what? Talking about a show that's a bit of fun, you know, is that, why not? Why not? I would love to do night. this more in the future. Believe me, that, yeah. that would be my desire. My desire would be to let's, let's break down shows we like. Well, hey, I mean, we'll probably do this again in two or three years when the next season comes Maybe. out. Mm -hmm. Or when the next good show comes out. <laughs> I'll give that five years, maybe. <laughs> Which one will be faster? I don't know. Um, but uh, thanks, dude. Well, thank you as well. Uh, I, and of course, 
thanks for, for hanging out with us, everybody. And yep. for kind donations. I'll... Well, we'll both catch them uh, Tuesday now, because real, real BBC. BBC. That's yeah. tomorrow. That is some, well for me. It's today. It's it's today for you. It's tomorrow for me. It's six twenty three here. So mm -hmm. hey, thanks for hanging. Uh, thanks to all the mods on both sides. Thank you for your kind work. We appreciate you. Thanks for the donations. Thanks for the super chats. See you Have a good tomorrow. night, I suppose. Cheers. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>